You may be seated, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Creating us all, yeah, the clean hearts. We ask him to renew his ruach. And the right ruach is one that testifies of the significance of the power of the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. For our lives have testified of our own ill-gotten practices and activities that are not according to the revelation of Torah or the witness of Yeshua HaMashiach. We greet you all in Yeshua's mighty name, you that have joined us on the live broadcasts, wherever you're listening from, we greet you in your sure smart name, even to our enemies and those that oppose us. We greet you all, because if your enemy is hungry, you simply feed them. And I feed you with the pure, the ta ta or the ta the pure lechem, the bread, the body, your sure Hamashiach. No compromising here at all, uh, no pretense, nothing that is homogenized, but it is uh, pure from the belly of Almighty Yah. You understand that homogenized milk is not the best thing for you or for your children. And so I feed you the unadulterated Torah, the Imat, the truth, revelation, Purpose, pleasure, will of Almighty Yah, Yeshua HaMashiach, will not leave one stone unturned, not one at all. Every stone shall be unturned, shall be overturned, and what is beneath that shall be revealed. You think that he's talking about a boulder or a hair, a mountain? He's talking about that stony, corrupt heart of his people. We must realize that Yah deals with his elect, his bahir, those that are the choice chosen elect by his position of his knowledge. So he has before the foundations of the earth, he has elected a people. Has nothing to do with your pedigree or your intellectual proudness, strength, or stamina. You don't think of a damn about that. Not one bit at all. You have no right of Torah. You have no right to instruct. There are many that have no legitimate the spiritual rights to instruct. As it was with the Pharisaic order and the Sadducees. I know that I promise that I will continue on the two witnesses, but I believe that what I want to teach you today is vitally important. First of all, for the stableness, the stability of Yisrael. We have wandered away from the strength of the pillars of Yah. Some years ago, I believe that one of the gatherings, I believe it was Pesach or Matzvah or Sukkoth, and the title or the emphasis of that gathering was the seven Ruachim, the seven spirits of Omariyah. And the Ruach HaChodash is the empowerment of Yah's mind within Yisrael. And so when the Ruach HaChodash comes, it is of the same value or the equivalence as the Ruach of Mishpatim or the Ruach of Deen or judgment, of judgment. So it is as the Ruach of wisdom. There are those that say they have the Ruach of Yah, but have no wisdom at all. It is of the same parative uh, as the Ruach of the Yare, of the fear of Yah. And so what this dirty, fallacious, wicked whore, this insidious Jezebel with all of her diseases, uh, she has brought the attention of the masses uh, and to what she called her damnable holy lie or the holy ghost. And it is predicated upon a devious conscience of man. And especially this European standard of what is right before Yah. To create this damnable most twisted delusion among the people of Yah. We must 
began to be emboldened by the honesty of your being truthful. His botak. And that is a trust in what Yah says. And we're not intimidated nor taken backwards because of an individual, their position, or what we perceive, perceive as a position of authority and power. I will not condescend to this damn wicked world. We must confront that which is wicked and which is unrighteous in the front of its face. And I will not falter on that. If I die, let me die doing the will of Yah. But I'm not ready to check out. You understand? But I will die fighting for the cause. And the cause is greater than me. Damn Dawid Yisraya. Damn the birth of David Roberts. Because it is not even anything to remember. How many of you remember those that are out there in the cemetery? So damn his birth. As Eyob said, let the day be khala, even the day that I was born. Because there's no significance to me or you. The significance is uh, Almighty Yah. And the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must understand that. I want to teach, preach, speak, hallow, yell from the perch of the weightier matters of Almighty Yah. The weightier things. What are the things that are of great substance? Of great riches? Of the most important value unto us, Yisraya. What do we value? What is the most weightier thing in our bosom, in our lives? What is the thing that is constantly upon the minds of the host of Yisraya as a people? Upon the mind of us as a nation, a part of the nation. What is the weightier things? What is the most prized thing? The weightier matters of Almighty Yah. Before I began, I want to define the word weightier not in the, this Eurocentric definitive, but from its origins of the Hebraic language, not the Aramaic. But the Hebraic, so that we may understand, and that I may, through the process of this hollowing or yelling, show you the significance of what is weightier. And you associate the weightier or the things of value to certain aspects of his identity. We as a nation of people, we have gone the way of the scribes and the Pharisees. If we understand the legitimacy of the perch of that organization, most of us have no knowledge of that. Because we, go, we don't go beyond the limitations of our will and our ability uh, to extend ourselves uh, to search out the value of what Yah has put in the book. So we speak from uh, thoughts of injection of words uh, for the moment... Uh, it doesn't reveal the power of the greater work of Yah in us. Everything he speaks is pure. It brings forth the abundance of his essence, his character, his characteristics, his personality, his demeanor. And so we are just like the scribes and the Pharisees. We're taking hold of things that we ought not to take hold of. And we have been in our own individual concept, internalized, personalized, and derived with our own concept of what the Torah of Yah reveals unto the house. But he gave that to a Pacific people. He gave that unto Levi, the tribe of Levi. And we can see in the Tasneeth, the pattern, when Korah Abai Ramadathan began to rise up against the messenger of Yah, he cut them off. You take 
too much. You don't understand there are things that we can assist, assist you in. Yah says no. And even when Yethro, his father-in-law, when he gave him the wisdom of Yah's conscience, he removed himself from the presence of Moshe. And he did not interject himself. You will not see that nowhere in the Torah. He left it to the wisdom of Yah to operate in the conscience of that messenger of Yah. This is a damnable generation. They don't even know a true messenger of Yah. You think they are going to know Yahshua when he comes, when he speaks. You think if Yahshua speaks to this generation individually in our minds and our conscience by a vocal projection of his call, you think that we would know it's him? We cannot even hear the simplest of messengers. There's a nation of people we become somewhat irritable. We get very weary quickly. Not in folly we don't get weary. When it comes to one expressing unto us the totality of Yah, we get this anxiousness in our flesh that that's enough. Well, first of all, you're listening to the wrong man and you're in the wrong place. No one shall hinder you from walking out of here or leaving this community. No one. We will assist if we have to go to the ground and dig up a tin can to find some assistance to assist you in your endeavor and in your journey. I'm going to teach today and I'm going to preach. It is going to be by the foolishness of Yah's mythology that he is going to Yashach, Yisrael, and those are the believers that have overcome and prevail against the most powerful opposition that, that oppose them daily. And that is their own consciousness and their own mind and their own will, their own purpose and what pleases us. There's a matter that pleases us. We don't frankly give a damn what others think. We don't give a damn what Yah thinks or what he considers, and that is simply the truth and the whole truth. So help me, Almighty Yah. That is why we must pray, Yah, raise up the Nobi, the prophet. At a time, the prophet was not among Israel, Yah. It was a dismal failure of regressing, backsliding into some of the most wicked practices that even Abraham, Yudshach, and Yaakov did not experience in their days. And we will find ourselves regressing into activities in our minds, in our practices that are blatantly defiance of the Torah and the conscience, the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And that is the truth, Yisrael. We began to adapt that pharisaic mindset. Yahshua spoke unto them in this occasion. He said unto them that you are the blind guides. You are in your spiritual knowledge. is not up to snuff. You do not have the spiritual, uh, inter the spiritual integrity of wisdom. He said, you're blind guides that strain, and we strain at a gnat. I want to read that. Then I will get into the depths of this message. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Again, all Yisra, we greet you all. We greet you. Your sure's mighty name, and we pray that Yabrach, you mightily and that he strengthen your bosom with all might. It says here in Matitya, chapter 23 and verse 24. He said that we are a people that are blind. 
you're blind. Matiti Ya Matthew 23 and verse 24. He calls them blind guides. He says, you are the ones that strain or zaha. You strain. Even the smallest of things, you refine that uh, in order that you may strengthen your position, uh, that you may carry forth in your actions and your deeds. And that is the nature of the Pharisaic mindset. It strains at a gnat at the smallest or a the smallest of things. And it says that we are a people that bala, that we swallow a camel. We are people that engulf. We are filled with such blindness of ignorance and hypocrisy. You can see what he says in the next verse. He called them the hypocrites. And we strain at that which doesn't need refining. And there are matters that are much greater, greater and weightier that we must be conscious of those matters. So this is the blind generation. And that's why everyone is falling. They're falling into their own snares, their own ditches and their own putrefied wickedness of their own actions and activity. It is one thing I want us so you never set a trap for anyone. I don't care what the battle is, leave it alone. <clears throat> Yah will repay. Vengeance is mine, says Yah. Let them do what they want to do. You walk in the way of Yah's Torah. The battle belongs to Yah. So let them have it. Don't even allow them to cause you to personalize anything. Let them go to hell. The weightier matters of Yah. I want to begin here in the book of Metithi Yah. Chapter 23. And verse 23. The weightier matters, the Yacham. I want to express to you. It is not anything that I have input to define this. I want to first of all express from the purest form of speech unto a nation of people that Yah spoke to his people the word Yacha or the Wadiya. I want to define it not from the objectivity or the objection of Strong's Concordance, but what Yah defines it as. What is the yaka, that which is most valuable? It is of the prized substance of any material. I want to define the word first. <clears throat> that we may understand the way it matters. It is that which has weight, substance. Not only that, but it is most precious because it is so rare. We're talking about the weightier matters now. The things that are rare, they are precious. They have great weight. They have great scepters among Yisrael. They have the splendor of Almighty Yah because they, they represent the beauty of His excellence. That's enough for me that, uh, as the old ones would say, I can sense the chills in my natural body. It has a splendor. It's not Yah splendor. Is that He mighty? It is of a value that cannot be uh, equated with Keshem or with money or the value of money. You cannot buy it. It cannot be purchased. There cannot be uh, a dollar sign or, or a significant value placed upon it. We're talking about the weightier things. The things that are of substance. The things that are splendor and rare. The things that are of great value. The things that you don't find. Even in the greatest of your intensity of search, you don't find them. Yacha. That which is weightier. It has the power of influential to influence one. 
That's the weightier thing. It influences. It alters the conscience, the speech, the attitude. The Torah of Yah should influence us, should it not? What is the thing that influences Yisra'ya more than anything? It is our own arrogance. Our own predisposition that we take up a position and a disposition without spending the proper energy and time trying to understand that. I had a call this morning. I usually don't answer the telephone of the Shabbat, but for some reason I answered it. Very beautiful act. And we were discussing things, and I said to him, I said, my friend, can I express one thing to you? And I told him to listen to us today. I asked, do you have children? He said, yes. I said, when a child comes to you, and we all have that nature, they express things or they convey unto you the accuracy uh, or the convincing words uh, from their intellectual or their mind perception. Uh, how much do they know of the matter? And I say, that's this generation. We will hear, we will survey a matter, and then we approach one by the limited resources uh, of our ability that's in our own mind. Yisrael, it's wrong. It's almost like a student approaching the scholar, the professor, and trying to show him the, the legitimacy of his point, where the man has dissected the matters of his mind 10,000 times over in different dimensions. But it is all the same. So the way of things are very influential, they're excellent, and they make us fat. They put fatness on us. They cause the fatness of Yah to be upon our bones that we are healthy in Torah delight. We represent the kingdom excellence because the weightier things are more valuable. It has the representation of the most honorable woman, a chayil. This is what the word zakha, the weightier matters, define. Because there was nothing more excellent than the most honorable woman. A chayil, a woman of strength, that possessed the chastity and the purity of Yah in her bosom, that her actions were not based upon her predisposition, her attitude, but they were based upon the concepts, the Torah, the laws of her rush, her hands. She was an honorable woman, a gadol, she was of great value, of great substance. These are the weightier matters. I want to bring attention to that. We are people of Yahweh destroyed because we lack knowledge. We must get into the depths of Yah's speech. And when we do that, we get into the depths of one's mind. That is what a psychiatrist does and a psychologist. They get into the depths. They examine the words of the individual. And they get into the depths of one's uh, erotic activities or actions. That's what they do. And so when we examine the words of Yah, we examine his mind. And we get into the depths of its definitives. Uh, that we understand uh, his power. We understand him uh, in a more defined way. That's why the enemy used one concept as gossiping and uh, lies of Shekah. That when one hears it. They define it another way to the next one. So when that one hears it, it defines the words a next, another way to the next one. And you will find a plethora of definitives. It is all based upon the simple fact of the gossip or the lie or the act deed that is fiction or non-fiction. But yet when it makes its circle, uh, it has evolved into an expression uh, that carry many connotations, although it began as a simple expression. As you all that were listening last night, we heard our Zakhin Akhtamas. He said that Re'ach, I am a military man, 25 plus years, I do believe. He's been in the military. And he said that everything, I, I believe in being straight, forthright, because that is how I learn the processes. Why did they teach him that? 
I recall as a green soldier going into the military. One of the first things they did with us, <clears throat> the drill sergeant whispered in one's ear, we going down to the north slope at 1030 and we shall all be ready at 1230. Now that's, or that analogy, how he said that. So his job was to whisper into the next one. And so there was segregation or space between us all uh, that I could not hear what he said or he could not hear what I said. And so as that traveled down the course of the line, when he came back to the drill, uh, oh, it was that we were meeting on the North Slope, but it was a variation. There were injection, presumption, and all displayed. Why did they do that? Because they taught us we must do things on time and properly as it is expressed. When we say zero, 1.30, we mean 1.30 a.m. in the morning. We don't say 5 p.m. because you may mistake that for 5 a.m. So everything in the military jargon was precise. It was accurate. So it is in the Torah of Almighty I don't care how the pins of the strives, how they have tried to inject or the personality of their conscience, but the mind of Yah is rejected in this book. I don't give a damn how they try to interpret it. This book has been interpreted only by a conscience, the writings, the papers, by what I call the European or the Eurocentric conscience. And to reveal unto the people no other nationality of people, no other. We might as well be legitimately honest with the matter. And it is a conscience and a mind that Hashatan has used and is using to project some of the most vilest of concepts that are not of Almighty Yah. There is no other nation that rules the landscape of what we call Christendom, not the papacy of Rome. It is headed by the Eurocentric or the European mind uh, uh, valuable points and of substance, and it rapes the minds of the people throughout the earth. We cannot be dishonest and not attack that. We must, and I shall, and I do, and I don't give a damn what one says. We must have one mind, and that is the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach. He speaks to us what is the weightier or the most valuable thing. It is of great reputation. That is the weightier matter or the word Yaka. 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 It is of great value and of great substance. I would have began here in the book of Metithia, 23, 23. Yoshua says, Woe unto you, you that are the suffer or the suffering Pharisees, and woe unto you, push him. He calls them uh, hypocrites. He said, You are a chanef. You're not sincere. You're phony. You're not honest. You apply one principle to the poor man and to those uh, that are not of your assessment equal. Uh, and yet, for you, uh, you swallow the camel. And yet, you small at the smallest infraction of one. That's wicked. I don't care whose loins it comes out of. He calls them honey, for you pay your tithes of mint and anise and cumin. And this is the catch here, he says, and you omit, you push aside. You don't consider. Your thoughts are not based upon the concepts of Torah. And you omit the yaka, the weightier matters of Torah. Do you all hear that? You omit the weightier matters of Torah. Those matters that are of great value. That are of great substance. They are rare. They are of excellence. They are of great splendor. It is the beauty of the honorable woman, her strength, her character. You don't find many honorable women today. One wrote me a letter and said, because of the beauty of a virtuous woman, 
And she says to me, I am a virtuous woman. I'm a woman of strength. And I trust in Omadeya. And if I have to wait for a man of that character and that strength, I will wait. I will not settle for anything less. You have no problems with me, Bath, Sion, or Tezayon. You have no problem with me at all. We are a nation of people because of the hypocrisy, because of the Hanif. We are superficial. And the reason we are superficial, the Hanif, we are soiled with sin, with pride and arrogance, our haughty ways, our sinful practice. We're full of shekers and lies. And so he said that you are hypocrites. It is like one that will write me and say that I'm a hypocrite and I'm interpreting the Torah wrong. And they live like hell. They have deducted their own private interpretation of Torah. And because what I teach and preach, it reflects their damn wickedness and their sinful ways. No man can declare this kind of simplicity to you uh, if he was a man embellished in all kinds of wickedness. If he was a robber and a thief. If he abused the people for money and for his own uh, lust for sake. He could not talk like this. These bastard slips can't talk like this because they are bastards. They have no legitimacy of inheritance uh, with Almighty Yah, I don't take it back either. I don't repent of this either. Hallelujah. He said, you pay your tithes to make yourself known. You do things that you can receive adoration or, or, or exaltation. He said, but there are things that are much greater that you omit. You don't even teach. And he begins here. He said, you omit, first of all, judgment. I know that we use the word mishpats, mishpatim, the judgments of Yah. But this is not the judgment as we go before the court of law. We go before the court of Torah to make sure that there is no gnat or even Campbell in our eyes. This is the deen of Yah. This is the judgment that has been carried out whereby the punishment and the sentence is laid upon the individual. It is not something the deans of Yah, the deen, D-E-E-N. It is not that I judge you and show you the mercies of Yah. It is that we have come to the culmination whereby you have been judged, you have been often reproved, and now it's time for condemnation. You condemn. He said, you omit the weightier things. He begins with, Judgment, deen, the condemnation. Has not God given us space of time to repent? Yes. When your sure comes, is he coming to condemn? Sure he is. We that are the Sudit, we shall receive our rewards. Yeah. I will close with some inspiration for you, all right? Let me stop there for a moment. We will get back to that, all right? I want to show you some of the weightier matters of Torah in the book of Yeremiah. You can put your little folder there at Matithiya 23 because I will go back and forward from Matithiya 23 to different places in Torah. He says here in the book of Yeremiah, how do we as a nation of people, 8 and 8, Yeremiah 8 and 8, how do you say that we are hacha, we are wise? We are skillful in the Torah of Yah, we are skillful in the wisdom of the Torah of Yah, we are hacha, we are learned and we are shrewd in our perception what is of Yah and what is not of Yah. How can we say we are wise? He's talking to a people that was into every kind of egregious activity against Yah. Their sins were pronounced. Are not our sins pronounced, Yisrael? We hide them. If we ever have an alt in our heart against an all, an ach, or an ahot, 
We have matters that we need to discuss and we hold them until they rise up into a Cassandra. Something is desperately, sickly wrong with us. We have an all we go to our brother or our sister, our hot or our ach. And we literally think our prayers are being heard. You have deceived yourself and you think you're wise. I'm bringing it home to Yisra'ya. Damn the wicked world. I am not concerned with that. The way to your matters now. Your sure say you omit. Where does judgment begin first? Here. It began first in Yah's house. He's going to condemn those and cast those out of his house. They have robbed. They have stolen. They have led the people astray. He's going to kill them all. So his dean begins in his house. How do I note that? Because if judgment first began at Bayat Yisrael, where shall the wicked, the ovin, the perverse, where shall they appear before Yah? He is trying to give us reference to his dean, to his condemnation. That's what he's trying to do. And this is weightier. We need to weigh the matters. This is the great substance. That if we see our ach going in a direction that will cause him to perish, and we allow that to stay in our bosom for days, months, and period of time, we're sick. You don't give a damn. You may think you do. We must learn the ways of Yah. We have not so learned Yahshua HaMashiach and our practices. We are wise and the Torah of Yah is with me. I know the Torah. I have insight in the Torah. That's how we speak. I don't care who you speak to today. They're all wise. They're all haka. They're shrewd too. They're always trying to correct and show you your imperfections. And yet they have not discovered by the power of Yah's condemnation. Because his condemnation doesn't mean a damn thing to this nation. Or the mindset that have been shaped by this Eurocentric and this most de defiable insanity against Yah. We need the messengers. We need simple men of Torah. We need that, Ma'am. We need that. Say, so we have the Torah with us. Yah says, See, certainly in vain a shav me he it. The pen of the stribe is vain. It is the lying pen. It is the lying hot tap in our hearts. We that are stribes. He is speaking to the shafrim. We all have written into our bosom the interpretation of Torah. We have tried to overwrite what Yah has written in us. He has hot tap. And so your pen is vain. For out of the love, out of the abundance of one's love, out of the lotion, the love, the heart of man, proceeds the issues out of his lotion. It is his tongue, his language that governs him. It is our speech that governs us. And so we have in vanity, because we are straining at the night. We're refining the knot. He should have, she, they, him, her. And yet we are swallowing the camel of the gamal. And the gamal, if we do any kind of legitimately research, the gamal, uh, it is, the camel was a beast of burden. And that's why we are burdened down. We are of the beastly nature. We are burdened down with trifle things. And yet we should, be, we should bear the weightier things of Almighty Yah in our conscience. And yet it is the most trifless of things. Something is twisted in us. When Yah speaks to Yisra'ah, there is not a transformation. Woe unto us as stripes and Pharisees. We're trying to overwrite 
It is the Ruach HaKodesh that comes and speaks of the legitimacy of the Torah of Yah through the testimony of Yoshua and Abuzim. And as the scribes have done, we are, by our own justification, speaking of our own strength and what we perceive and how we have deducted the matter and how it should be. But it's not of the dictates of Torah. And so you got everyone going in their own individual ways. That's why our Zohar and Thomas could ask, why is it that everybody got a message, but it's no message of deliverance. It's not a message of power. If you don't want to be delivered, you will not listen to a man like me. You promote it, you know I'm promoting the man in me. You don't want me. If you want something homogenized, you don't want me. That's just a fact. I have never been troubled by that, Zach, in all my life. I knew that as a young ignorant man, I knew that, even in the natural sense. I don't care how I befriend men. They would always turn against me. That's why... I say to men, don't speak of me. Don't speak of what superlatives that are grandizing. To, please don't do that. I don't want you doing that. This Ahot has been with me and that young man longer than anyone. And she can tell you one of the first things I did. You will not stand up and testify of anything that is associated with me. You appreciate Yah. You will appreciate me. You will not do that here. I don't care where and what when you learn that disposition. Here it will not be done. I don't like that when men say that. I will tell them stop. I'm a man as Shaul said of the same like passion. Yeah, I wanted sons and daughters. I wanted to, my own. But I want the passion of Almighty Yah to learn how to, to love Yisra'ya. We have not learned the love of Yisra'ya because we have omitted the weightier things. And I will get to the crux of that. So he speaks unto those uh, that are intellectual in Torah. They have the power to study. They have the resources of the Torah that the layman did not have. Uh, and yet their pins, uh, they were write things or, or they were inject ordinance uh, and statues into the statues of Yah that would favor their kind. And they didn't give a damn about the man that was dull, the man that was poor, the man that had no riches or substance. And so when you look at your son or daughter, your judgment of them is different than me. That's wrong. I will come on. I haven't gotten started yet. You understand? We omit the weightier matters, the valuable things to Yah, and that is the mind of the scribes and the Pharisees. We will inject and deduct. Hallelujah. That's why we must care, be careful in our analyzing of Torah. And it must be revealed by the Ruach HaChodash. Not by your intellectual capacity. Yah gave gifts unto men. And he is not going to change that for anyone. Moving on, may I, I want to express to us a weightier matter or the thing that is of great substance, the Yaka as Daiweed. Who could speak from a heart that was of great substance like Daiweed? A heart that is intimate, a heart that realizes its sins, its weakness, and the wickedness. So this man, he spoke from a disposition of knowledge, wisdom, and experience with Almighty Yah. And he gives us clear reference here into Helium Psalms 36 and verse 7. He used the word, that's why we must define words and look at the words in their specific expression as to what Yah is trying to convey unto us. My ark. he did not mean for the wicked to understand this. He has hidden the wisdom of his Torah from those that are wise and prudent. And he's revealed it unto those that have no identity or have no inheritance of anything. I have no inheritance. My mother had nothing to leave me. My natural father, I am not even a part of his chronology. So he take that which is nothing. 
The Tasneef was Yisra'ya. The naval cord was cut. They were dirty. They were filthy. He take that which is nothing. And he poured the power of his ruach in that one. And that which is highly esteemed because of your intellectual education of proudness. And because of your position in life. Because of your family or matriarchy. A structure of your home. He said these are the damn fools here. That little dirty thing. That's. Birth out of Bithynia Davison. Her name has no meaning. That little dirty thing. That's my boy. Hallelujah. I'm not taken down. I will never take down for this cowardly, weak generation. We're in the days where, the, where man is more precious than the, than the gold wedges of Up. Or up high. What do you find a man today? Yeah. Like we says here in Tehillim 36 verse 7. He uses the word yaka. He says how yaka. I know it says how excellent. But we must have the diligence to search beyond what is physically present before us. This is the word yaka. I will ask you to answer this in your own conscience. He says how valuable, how prized, how precious, how rare is the love kindness. Is yours hasid? Is the love kindness of your rare? Is it precious? Is it the most valuable thing? How yaka. How yaka. How prized, how splendid. How beautiful is the hasid, the mercies, the love kindness, the tenderness of Yah, O Yah. He said, therefore, therefore, the children, the bane of Adam, they put their chasa, they put their trust under the shadows of your wing. They, 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 they hide under the shadows of your Torah as a refuse, as a refuse, their chasa, not Motaka, but they hasa, they trust. They, they, they're overwhelmed by the beauty and the fragrance of your wings as you spread the wings of your hasset. Your mercies are part of soul. Although we have sinned and fallen, we've done wickedly. Why? Because we must understand those things that are weighty and of value. I will get to the dean of y'all. Don't worry about that. I want to show you some things that are very valuable. And things that are rare and prized. They have great substance. They can hardly be found among Yisrael. His Hasset. His Nahan. Nahan is the mercies of his tender kindness. That in the definitives of man they cannot define it. Yah spoke that when he spoke that to Abraham Yitzhak. When he spoke that to Adam. It is the power of his Ruach invading their hearts. The words that y'all speak, the only way you're going to understand that, and the only way you're going to have any conscience of that, you must allow that to work in your bosom. The only way. There are things that we hear we may not understand. The only way you're going to get inside of that, you must allow it to eradicate, to rip out, to tear down. His love kindness, is, is it not valuable to us? Is that more weightier than life itself or substance, clothes, and food? It is a much greater value. It is much more weightier than the little trivial uh, and the trifle things, Yisra'ya. The things of that burden of that beast, that camel, that gamal, uh, that burden thing that burden you down in your mind uh, and your ruach. It is our own hanif. It is our own hypocrisy that burden us down. It is one thing that a hypocrite is not honest. A hypocrite is not forthright. A hypocrite will gather things in their heart and hold it back. They will not speak uh, they will not come forth and be honest and say, my ark, you have offended me. That's how you do it. I can, I can be working with an ark and there are things. I don't get what it is. I'm forthright and honest. If his breath stinks, I say, smell my breath. Does it stink? Well, yours stink, my friend. You need to do something about that. I don't take it to him and to him or to him. See, I'm not going to allow that to be a burden because if his breath stinks or her breath stinks, uh, you don't want to get close and you get upset. You don't realize how your breath stinks. I will, man. 
You don't realize how immature you are. I'm driving it home in the bosom of Yisrael. A people that think that it is wise or they are wise. And yet we have allowed our own inscription of our own mind to distort the Torah of Almighty Yah. The weightier of things is love kindness. It is a great value. It is yaka. It is excellent. Therefore, we as the sons of Yisra'ya, we put our hasa, we seek the Torah of Yah because there is where we find refuge from this oppressive world. We're not going to find a, a, a refuge in the things or the activities of the world. We only find it in the Torah of Yah. Your sure is the living Torah of Yah. You can only find it in your shoe, the living power of his truth, uh, that we know that we can live in the power of sincerity in the flesh because he did. Because he lives, uh, we can face today. Yeah. We're not worrying about tomorrow because it's not promised. Yeah. We trust under the shadows of his wings. Yeah. He goes on to say in verse 8, uh, he said, they shall abundantly rava, they shall be satisfied they shall be abundantly satisfied. It shall be an intoxication that we're overwhelmed. That we're drunk and we shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of your house, Yah, your bed. You shall make them drink of the rivers of your Eden, the rivers of your pleasure. Don't we want the rivers to drink from the rivers of Yah's pleasures? What pleases Him? Can I show you the rivers of His pleasures? The rivers of pleasure? Hallelujah. I'm going to take my time today. Whether you stay with me or be with me, it makes no difference. You can go to the football game for all I care. His people are destroyed. Did he not say they shall be satiated, they shall be rava, they shall be satisfied, it shall be an intoxication with the fatness of your house and you shall make them drink of the river of your pleasure. To helium one. To helium one. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of the vile hatta, the sinners, that defile the Torah of Yah, nor sit in the seat of those that make mockery of Torah in, uh, with scorners. He said, but his delight, his hafet, is in the Torah of Yah. And his Torah does he meditate day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. He shall be like the tree. We're not a tree planted by the rivers of water. We shall bring forth the abundance of Yah's fruit in due time. Our leaves shall not fade, nor shall they wither at all, Yisrael. We must delight. Yahshua said, but you omit the weightier things, the yakha, the weightier things of the Torah. When our minds do not meditate in the Torah, when we do not consciously, conscientiously uh, train our minds uh, to delight in the Torah of Yah, we are a people that are dry. That's why dry bones, where they live, can these dry bones live? The only way the dry bones is going to live, there must be a reconstitution. And the only way dry bones can be reconstituted, reconstituted, there must be added moist in the bones. And we need to live in water. We need to live in water of his Torah. We need the power, the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach. And those that deny Yahshua, they are dead in their damned sinful practices. They have no life of the living substance of Yah's Torah in them. They don't even know how to express the Ahava, the love, the, the kindness and the tenderness to one another. Hallelujah. He said, we shall drink from the rivers of his pleasure, of his Eden, his luxury, his sincere motive. We shall delight in that. We shall drink of Yah's blessings. These are the weightier things. Why? For with you is the fountain of the machor, the source of life. And the source of life, the machor, the source, is Yahshua the fountain of the living water. You cannot get bitter and sweet water from the same fountain. It cannot happen. He says, you shall be, he says, uh, and you, he said, for you is the machor, the fountain, uh, the beauty of Yah's excitement, the beauty of his joy that flow. He said, the fountain of life uh, in your light, 
shall we see the light. It is in the Ra'ah, the vision of Omar, the vision of Torah that we see Yahshua. You cannot see Yahshua without the vision of Torah. And without the vision of Torah, you cannot see the living Torah. And Yahshua is the living Torah of Yah. And without the vision of what has been written by the Nabi, by the prophets, uh, we cannot weigh out the weightier things. Uh, and without judgment of the deed of Yah, we don't understand the purity of his righteousness. We're not going to walk in this defiance to Yah and think that there's a great reward for us. There's a reward for us. It's death, hell, and separation. Yisra'ya. So we understand as that we said his love kindness, uh, it is yaka, it is excellent. It is excellent. It is of value, it is of great substance. We need that. We need that, Yisra'ya. That is of great value. It is of great substance. These are the things of the Torah. These are the weightier things of the Torah. To love Yah with all. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Who is the neighbor that he was pointing toward? He was pointing toward Yisra'ya. I cannot learn how. To love those that I don't know until I learn to love those that I do, yada, have experience. I cannot love strangers never met and say I love them. That's not the truth. You invite them into your home, you invite them with liberties. That's not so. There's skepticism, and that's what this dirty hoe has taught us. So he brought them out, my ark, and he gave them a land of abundance of Gosha in the land of the Kemets of the Kemet, the land of the black soil and the black face. You understand? He put them in a place whereby they could blend right in with the nationality of that nation, Misraim, which is the burnt land or the black face. That's what it implies. That's where he put them. He did not put them in Europe. He did not put them in the Caucasus Mountains of Russia. He put them in Misraim as Miriam, Yosef. Had to flee with your sure to Misraim. That's the truth. Not this Angloid concept of the Most High. It is polluted. Y'all must pour out his rock in this day. Yes. We must have messengers of great strength and fortitude to annul and to tear down the lies of hell that has crippled the house of Yah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. His love kindness is, uh, is of great substance and of great value. Hallelujah. Of great substance. I want to share with you that fountain. That, uh, is that all right? The fountain that uh, Dawi talks about, that machor, is what purifies our life. There's only one fountain where there's purity. And the purification of Yah comes from, it's found in Yeshaya, Isaiah 28, 16 and 17. Yah says unto us, therefore this say the sovereign Yah. This is what Yah says. This is what not uh, Zachend uh, or anyone says. This is what the sovereign Yah says. He says, behold, uh, I lay in Sion, or to Zion, I lay in Sion, uh, a macha, a foundation, a stone, a tri stone, and he is a yaka, he is a precious stone. You understand? He is the foundation of the fountain of life. Isaiah 28, verse 16. He said, lay among Israel the foundation. It is a precious or a yaka. What is precious is not the Torah or the matters of the Torah. Precious. We cannot strain as a blind guide, as a knot, and we swallow, we swallow a camel. We swallow our own vile burdens that we bear that are not a Torah, that we should bring the burdens unto Yah and bring them before the, the Zachin, that we may be relieved of that Yisra'ah. But Yah says, I lay a foundation, a stone. He is tried. And not only that, but he is Yaka. Is Yoshua Yaka? Is he Yaka? Is he precious? Is he of great value? Is he rare? Is he splendid? Sure he is, Yisrael. I'm trying to show us the weightier matter and what things are that ought not to have such dominance in our petty lives. That we grow up. 
nurturing ourselves and become strong spiritually, physically, mentally, uh, in every capacity, Yisra'ah. He's a precious cornerstone. Uh, and it says he is a yasad, he is a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. And then he tells us mishpat. The mishpat, the judgment, the ordinance of Yah, the statutes. Judgment uh, also will I lay to the plumb line. What he said, all matters shall come through the very matters of Torah. Everything, it shall be laid to the plumb line. He is the, he is the, he is the foundation. He is the, he is the Yosha, the straight one. His words are straight. His actions are straight. His attitude, his position is straight. It is an allegiance, an alliance with the Torah, the matters of the Torah of Yah. We are scribes, we have hatab. We've tried to overwrite the ways of Yah and our own wickedness and our hanef, our hypocrisy. We defend the sins and the wickedness of this one, my son, my daughters, my kinsmen, and we don't defend the power of Torah. Something is twisted in us. I'm not backing down, I don't give a damn who it is. These cowards cannot challenge me when it comes to Torah. Because I don't speak from a homogenized spirit. I don't learn something today and begin to talk about it tomorrow. I take time to study, reference and study and study. That's the way I am. We hear something, we shoot off with that. You have no intellectual proudness of the matter. You cannot speak from a depth. That's wrong, Yisra'ah. Hallelujah. He said, and Sadiq, the righteousness or the character of Yah to the plummet, and the hell of the Barat. The Barat, the hell is Yah's judgment, isn't it? Do we not see that in Misraim, among the Misraim, the people of Egypt? He says, and hell or the Barat, the judgment of Yah, shall sweep away the refuge of Kazab, of lies. The judgment of Yah. Don't we want Yah's judgment? It sweeps away the refuge. We, what is a refuge? A place or a thing that we take consolation in, isn't it? And so we must lay things according to the plumb line of the foundation. Uh, the foundation of Yah is his Torah. Yah shows the living Torah of Yah. And when we lay things according to that plumb line, according to the witness of Yahshua, that it will sweep away the zakh, the, the, the kazab, the lies, that we take refuge and comfort in. We take comfort in our own lies, that we lie to ourselves, we speak lies to ourselves, and we take comfort in that that's not of Yah. That we tell us when we take comfort in, where our refuge is, it's in the Torah. His Torah is precious. It is his love kindness. That he loved us enough to reveal unto us the beauty of Torah. I, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to fight against Yah for that. I appreciate him. I do. In all of my ignorance. I am not the wisest man. Not nowhere close to one. But the simple things I know, I know them. The simple revelation that I understand, I know it. Hallelujah. I understand it quite well. Hallelujah. 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 He says that this or the judgment of Yah, the hell, he says, Barat, and that is the judgment of Yah. When his judgment upon Yisra'ah is swept away that uh, those lies of Pharaoh, who is the mighty one that you serve, Moshe? I will let the people of Yah go. It is his judgment shall sweep away the refuge of uh, uh, Kazab, your lies, uh, or the things that are founded upon lies, uh, or that which is vain, uh, has not, as I read there uh, in Yeremiah, that the stripes uh, through the vanity, the shaft of their pen. Uh, what is the pen? It represents that which is, has the ability to engrave or to carve things in our hearts. That they have a permanent placement. That's what a pen was used for. When they carved into the limestone or they carved and they put the print into rocks. As we can see 
uh, in Egyptology, stones and the sphinx, thousands of years old, and they still have the same uh, beauty of their encarving. There are things that the world has encarved in us uh, that it must be erased, Yisra'ya. And the only way it's going to be erased through the deen, the judgment of Yah, that you know that this is going to condemn you. You're going to have to stop practicing that and acting that way. You must know that. If we don't have messengers of Yah, we are a dismal people. We're going to all fall into the gates of delusion and hell. And that's a fact. There is no employer employs you to leave you to your own to do what you want to do. And Yah has not left this impotent, immature generation of mankind to itself. He warns us, he warns, he tells us, he raises up messengers, uh, and we have disdain for them. Do we not? Shall we do, Yisra'ya? He said, it is that, it is the judgment of the deen of Yah. We need that judgment to sweep away the refuge of lies. And I can show you, uh, and, and the water shall overflow your hiding place. Uh, what water? The living water of Torah. The refuge of lies that we know we're lying to one another. We lie and we walk in our own lives. We perpetuate lies. We need to be judged of that matter. That it will sweep it away. And if we are not judged of that matter. We don't have the dean of Yah Yah letting you know that you are going to be condemned in hell for that. Uh, you will continue to perpetuate that. And that's why we, this is a weightier matter for us. The judgment of Yah, the dean of Yah. The judgment of Torah. We need to understand that. We need to get focused on that because he's coming. And he's not going to spare anyone. He's not sparing your babies. He's going to dash them in pieces in young Akharid as Zakhin Yarabiya pointed out to us. He's going to cut them. He's going to kill them. You can't equate Yah with your kind of consciousness. Why? Because our minds have been polluted by sin. Once we get the mind of Yah, we can understand his retribution. What is man that he is mindful of him? And the son of man that he visits him. What are we? We are to appreciate that he is mindful of us. He is so mindful of us. He tells us the Zakah HaShabbat. Keep it kadosh. Set it apart. Don't do nothing. Don't labor. Don't do a damn thing. Just remember that. Oh, I know you got activities. You've been busy during the week. You have to work. You have to do that. You have to do this. He said, but I want you to Zakah HaShabbat. Remember that. He said, keep it set apart. Don't do nothing. I don't want you to light no fire. I don't want you to cook it. I don't want you doing that. I don't want you doing the laundry. I don't want you cleaning up a spot. I don't want you doing nothing. Just come to my house. Sit there and relax. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he wants. You don't incorporate any. It's, it's wickedness to incorporate any activity in your Shabbat. I don't care what it is. I don't care if they're burying. Let the dead bury the dead. Okay, what they do? I will not be a part of it. That's me. As the old folks will say, I love him because he first loved me. I, I don't know how to love, but my heart desire is to walk in his commands. Because each day that I live, I know I'm getting closer to that place. And you are too. I'm getting closer to my time. So are you, my friends. You're getting close there. You may not want to buy it. So I want his mishpatim. I want his deen. I want him to condemn me. If our hearts condemn us, Yah is greater than our hearts. If our own heart brings condemnation, come on, what a great blessing that is. Because he is greater than our hearts, he is able to redeem us. He is able to bring us out of that. So we ought to be glad that our hearts condemn us. I am. I'm glad that's the heart of your sure. He came not to condemn the world. Why? Because the world was already condemned. So we have the mind of your shoe and our hearts are condemning us. Yah's greater than that. Not only is condemnation, but the, 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 his ability to retrieve us. The weightier things of the Torah that we began with is love kindness. Hallelujah. The love kindness of Yah, which is beautiful. He tells us how he's going to measure all things by his justice. Torah, his justification. Hallelujah. Yahshua, he lays in Sion to Zion a sure foundation. It is a pristine fountain, a machor, where the fountains of water flow. 
of the living water. The Ruach Him of the ha, Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach of uh, the Yare HaYareya, the fear of Yah. The Ruach of Huchma, the wisdom of Yah. The Ruach of Da'at, the knowledge, the, the discernment of Yah. All of that. Come on, Yisra'ya. It is time that we as a nation, we began to weigh the matters before us and see how weighty they are and what substance they are of, Yisra'ya. In the deep lamentation of Yeremiah, he cries here, What is precious to Yah? Who are? And what is of a weightier matter? We're talking about uh, the yacha, that which is of weightier, it is valuable, it is prized. Look what it says here in ichat or, or lamentations. Lamentations, echa, echa. Lamentation chapter 4, verse 1. He speaks of the activities of Yisra'ya, how wicked we have become, how vile, how incensed we are to him as a nation now. As he shows us the contrast or the difference between the, the beauty and the riches of those uh, that were before us. And this is why the cries of Yeremi are the lamentation, the burden of tears. We have never experienced that, the burden uh, of crying. You may have situations in your life whereby you're, you're burdened down and agony with that, uh, but not like this lamentation, the cries. Uh, he speaks here in the fourth chapter, verse 1. Yah says, how is gold become dim? How is the most fine kept them goal change? He says the stones at the Kadosh, Kodash place are poured out in the top of every street. The beauty of Yah's Bayat and the beauty of Torah expression and the beauty of Torah building or the power to build. It takes Torah to build. We cannot build a life that is circumspect according to Yah's delight unless the pillars of Torah are laid in our lives. And Yahshua, he came to simplify it in a living way. Whereby we had to try to practice to do it. He gave us the living substance to adhere, to obey what Yah commands. So the very precious stones of Yah are poured out on every street corner, the finest of the place, poured out on every street. He uses the word here in verse 2, the Yakha. He calls us the precious sons of Sion. Again, I will define the weightier things. We're dealing and defining what is weightier. We are the sons of Yah, are we not? So the matters of Torah, the weightier things, uh, should be among us. And we began with judgment. We began there. We began there. Yaka, it is valuable. It is prized. It is precious. It is rare. It is splendid. It is high value. It is influential. It is excellent. It is fat. It is the honorable woman. And it is a reputation. That is what the Yaka of Yah is. And he identifies us, the sons of Tizayon, uh, as precious. Look how he compares us. It's not gold precious today in the natural sense. In the commodity market, it's not gold and silver more precious than, than even the only thing that it is not appealing uh, uh, to the eyes uh, of most Americans. It is platinum. And there are a few other ores uh, that sell with the same kind uh, of value price because they're very rare. And gold is very rare. He said the sons of Sion. How precious are they? He said they are, they are precious sons of Tizayon, comparable to fine gold. Comparable to fine gold. That is weightier. That is a weightier substance. The tremendous association and the fellowship and the friendship of the Ark of Tizayon. It is comparable to fine gold. How are they esteemed as earthen vessels? How are we esteemed now? As though that we are earthen vessels. In every great house, there are vessels of all kinds of element. Gold, silver, earthen, clay, vessels of honor and dishonor. How have we become as earthen vessels that are porous, Yisra'ya? Because we have omitted the weightier things of Torah. 
We have omitted the weightier things. He said that you're finer than the, the finest of gold. And yet because we have omitted the weightier things, we have not begun with the dean, the judgment. When one sin with Shaul said, when he wrote on to Corinthia, he said, that one that is among you that will have his father's wife, he said, you seem to glory in that. He said, put the damn bastard out, cast him out, turn him over to her short tongue for the destruction of his flesh, prevention that is not flesh may be delivered. He said, you take somewhat of a arousing of that. And the reason why, because you have with your corrupt pen as a scribe, you have prescribed a certain medication for you because he has done it. It gives you the right to do it. And it's wrong, Yisrael. It's not of you. How are they esteemed as earthen vessels? The work of a hand of a potter. He said, even the behemoth or the sea monster draws out of the breast. We're not drawn from the breast of Yah. Your sure breast is precious. He said, they give suck to the young ones. The daughter, the daughter of my people, he said, they have become, ach, they become cruel. Today the man has no breasts or the daughter to draw from because that's the truth. Because they have become cruel. I don't speak that in uh, any kind of, of despairing of the bath of Tizayan. He said they have become cruel like the ostrich in the wilderness. They have become achza. They speak harshly. They talk from their bellies. They say what they want to say. That is the truth. He said, you're just like an ostrich. You lay the egg and you don't give a damn. You don't give a damn how. You speak what you say. He said, now why do you think that the precious sons of Sion are like, are like earthen vessels now? So we must not omit the weightier matters. You don't think you're cruel in your own Torah or your own righteousness. You don't think you're cruel. He made man. He made the pecking order, not me. Yah established that. You got a problem, you must go to him. Don't confront me about that. He made the order. Yah's the head of Yahshua. He did that. Yahshua the head of man. Man the head of woman. He did that. He said, the daughters have become cruel like an ostrich. They lays her egg in the sand and leaves it there. But yet he has made the bath of Tizayon, the men, precious. And he uses the word Zachah. I reread the definitive again. It is honorable woman. It is a woman that is honorable. That when she walks, everyone sees her walk, not her mincing. Everyone sees her beauty. The assembly, they should see our walk. We should walk like Yahshua. We should act like Yahshua. We should talk like him. And that's what the honorable woman represents. There is nothing more precious than the honorable woman. From her breath, from her shirt, from her titty nipple, come forth the fountain of life. It brings joy when the baby gets that the baby smiles. It brings delight. It brings comfort. When the baby sucks from the titty, it can't sleep at night. Because we removed ourselves from the way of matters. From judgment, we began to allow the concept of the world to replace the judgment of Yah. Then the women today damn their young as they don't even give them titties. Uh, they give them some damn Similax milk. Poison of hell. You ought to not make your baby to drink cow's milk. The mama's titty milk is love. He did not make your baby bring it from your loins. You give it some kind of mad scientist ingredients with sugar. You did not intend for that to go on your baby. Yeah. Intended for the sweetness of your love, the sweetness of your shad, your titty. First thing that it feels. 
Cow doesn't send the calf to goats to milk. You better know that the sheep will not allow the ewe to go to the nanny, the goat, for milk. What strange creatures we are. What strange creature. We must begin at the weightier things, the valuable things of you. And judgment is a valuable thing of you. His deed. His deed. And he says to the man, because you have not, you have not operated in that, then you have become like an earthen vessel. You're porous. You can even retain the water. A vessel that is porous, you can get a clay vessel. And if it's just a clay vessel, I don't care. Leave the water and then see how the water will evaporate or the vessel will absorb that. And yet he said that I made you vessels, you're vessels of gold. And yet you become dim. And because of that, then the bath it is I own, they become achah, they become cruel, and they're mean. Just like an ostrich that leaves her eggs in the sand for the lion, for the, for the mumba to eat. And that's what we're doing because we're not examining ourselves. We're being swept away with lies. And the only way you're going to sweep lies away, you must allow the dean, the condemnation, to say that you are a liar, you are corrupt, my ach, you are a lion, or hope, you told a damn lie, and in hell you're going to lift your eyes. How do we have an order against someone uh, and then all of a moment we explode to tell them uh, what our disposition is uh, and you come before Yah and pray and you bow down. That's wickedness, man. Come on, woman. You're not right. Uh, you don't see because you're not allowed the judgment of Yah, his deen, uh, to condemn you, but you condemn me. You condemn him. You condemn her. That is the truth. I shall, my friend. I said that I wasn't going to talk loud today. I didn't feel like talking last night. I want to reach all some of the letters whereby those have written to me to tell me that I'm a dog and all of that. That's all right. I don't mind that. I really don't. There are people that put things on our YouTube. I say, leave it there. I want it there. The only thing I got to do is click delete and it's gone. I want it there. There's an individual that has a site up. I know who the cowardly individual is. Taking our videos and putting them there and say, this man is a liar. He is corrupt. All he wants to do is live fat and live off the money of the people. I don't know where I'm living fat here. I work. He doesn't work. I'll tell you what. Come work with me a day then. I could have used your help in that solar greenhouse the other day. No doubt about that. Isn't that right? Zach ain't been to me. He said, let's take a break now. Come on. It was hot in there. I was ready to take one way before he even mentioned one. So if you want to find out what work is, you can come work with me. Make sure you got a strong back now. Hallelujah. Make sure you cut your ingrown toenails and your bunions because you're going to be on your feet. All right. Hallelujah. All right. So that doesn't trouble me. I am not. It's all right by me. I like it. I really do. I like it. Hallelujah. I hope someone goes and says, let me check this man. I'll say, well, this man doesn't talk like that. He can't talk like that. And he's, nah. If I was one controlled by my ohot, I could never talk like this. If I had so much drama in my house and emotional circumstances, I could not deal with the house of Yisraya this way because it would be an impediment to me. It would bind me. I could not talk the way I talk. I would have no shalom to study the Torah. I will have no time, even uh, when I know I've defrauded my wife, uh, and that is quite frequently, I will have no time to endeavor into the depths of Torah. I have no one antagonizing me and uh, always battering me and telling me what I'm not doing. I don't have that. Haven't had that. And that's just the truth. I don't have no one belittling me and telling me uh, uh, what I need to do. I don't have no one doing me like that. I just don't have it. I don't have nobody raising hell in me uh, and telling me how I'm neglected. I don't have that. What I do have, I understand. That's all right. Can you please? Not right now. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach. It said the tongue in verse for the tongue of the suckling child cleave to the roof of his mouth. And that's what we are, suckling children for thirst. He will love to feed us with meat, the strong things, the things that are weightier. But we are still bathed. We are still sucking on the titty nipple. 
That's why we can't handle the weightier things. They're strange to us. You can't command someone to go and lift 50 pounds when they have, uh, lift 200 pounds when they can't lift 50. You better get big gear with 10 pounds and then work your way up. There's no shame to doing that. What's wrong with that? We are like the children, the tongue of the suckling child cleaves to the roof of his mouth. The young child acts bread. There's no lecture, there's no revelation of your sure. And no man breaks it for them. Nobody breaks down the Torah. Nobody breaks down the Torah of Yahweh, the weightier things that you have. Nobody breaks it down. You that have children, do you not break the food down? She's getting where she needs a little heavier food. Don't you put that stuff in that thing and grind it around? You don't give her a biscuit and say, eat that. You break it down, don't you? Maybe add a little milk or a little water, whatever. And to the child, it's delicious. And you began to graduate that little child from that broken down lecture of the bread until when she, when she gets a biscuit, she says, ah! And that's the way it must be done. It must be broken down. That's why I'm a simple messenger of y'all. I'm not one that extravagant, extravagant. I don't know the very depth of the power of the intellectual proudness of this book, but I know the simple things. I know them. And I studied them. I will lead that unto you to do that. I'll study the simple things. The things that are necessary for us for making it in on into, uh, as they were saying, Beulah land. Into the kingdom. That's what I want. And we may hear the sound of the shofar. And so we as children, we need, we need the meat. We need the bread. And we need someone to break it down. In my days, we, they would say, break it down to me now. I don't know what kind of jargon they use today. They would say, break it down. Break it down to my level. There were men that they did not try to promulgate in their knowledge. They said, break it down. Break it down to me, bro. Come on, break it down, bro. That's the way they talk. They went out, okay, break it down to me. Make it easy for me to understand. Oh, yeah, man, you broke it. Hey, boy, he broke it down like a champ. That's the way they did it. Now, we don't want that. We don't want nobody to break it down for us. And so who's breaking the bread for the babies? We need the weightier things, Yisra'ya. The things that are of great substance and great strength. We need that, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. We're in the time just like Shemuel. Shemuel. I want to read this quickly here in 1 Shemuel, 1 Samuel 3 and 1. This is weightier. I'm still dealing with the word, as I said, Yaha, that which is precious. Then I want to break down some of the judgments of Yah. And then I want to close with something very beautiful. You all bear with me. Hallelujah. Look at what Shemuel, first Shemuel says here, chapter 3, verse 1. It says, and the child, Shemuel, not El, but El, he ministered or he Sharath, he served. He served, he served or he ministered to Yah before Eli, 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 Eli. And listen to this. And the Torah, the word of Yah was Yaka in those days. And there were no open chazon, no open vision. Without vision, we perish as Zachim brought out to us. That's why we need the Torah of Yah. Did it not say that there were no open vision in that day? No chazon, no vision from heaven. No prophecy of vision, no foresight of the future. And that's why the Torah, the word, the dabah, the speech, the promises of Yah, they were zakhah. And the Torah of Yah should be precious. What, which implies it should be of weightier substance. Everything that the Torah says, it should have weight. We would use that in our vernacular in my upbringing. Well, man, that, ain't, that has no weight. I want something that's heavyweight, baby. That's the way we talk. Give me some heavyweight. And that's lightweight. We need the heavier, the things that are of weightier substance. 
So on that day, there were no chazon, there were no vision, there were no nobi standing, declaring the visions of Yah from how I am. And so that's why Shemuel, as he served and ministered in the house of Yah, attending to the things, attending to the things that Eli commanded him to attend to. Because he knew that Yah's word was precious in that day. We cannot just handle this Torah Yisra'ah. And not allow it to be applicable to us. We cannot handle this Torah and omit us. We see the weightier things of the Torah. So we omit ourselves from, uh, from that judgment or that ordinance. But yet we, uh, we do not allow the poor individual that is dead. Or the one that is only that is weak. Have no strength and knowledge of Torah. We exact a greater price on them than we do ourselves. I will show you that. Hallelujah. Moving along quickly. The word of Yah should be precious to us. In this day, Yisra'ah, it should be one of the most precious things to us. Second Chronicles, Odibri Ha Yamim. Second Chronicles. Dibri Ha Yamim. Second Chronicles 3 and 6. Hallelujah. This is the Bayad of Yah. This is how the house Shulomo, this is how it was garnished. Are we not the house of Yah, the Bayad of Yah? We are, it says this in verse 3 and 6. I want to point out the Zachar. It says, and he garnished the bayat with Yachar or precious stone for beauty. And not only that, but he got gold. And the gold was of Pravaim. Unknown. I don't know what Pravaim is is and where it was but the goal had to be of great value he said that he garnished the house should not the bed of Yah be garnished with the precious gold or the nuggets of Torah should not this bed be garnished with the weightier things of the matters of the Torah and not the little trifless sifting sign of things come on Yisraya we must become stronger Why will that bath to Zion begin to feed her child things of more solid substance? Because the child begins to grow stronger. And as the child begins to grow stronger, it utilizes more energy. Because she's going to twist and roll and crawl and walk and run and fall, it takes more energy. For this battle that we are in, we need weightier things. You're not going to get by on water and soup. It's not going to work. You need substance. I was reading, did not read the article, and I say, how this, this is a wicked, dirty nation. I glanced at the article because my heart was just too heavy to read it. The devastation there in Afghanistan, the people are just dying. The diseases, the dying, malnourished. Well, the Talmudan, Talmabad, Talmud, Talmudan was there. Yet the people were not dying. They're dying like flies in that nation. This is not told to the masses of people. This nation is going to pay for her corruption. There's no mind that has pillaged the world and nations like the mindset of this nation of Britain. And France, those sons of Jephthah, they have killed and butchered and robbed and destroyed. It is not Iran there in Afghanistan. It is America bombing. It is Britain. It is the Italian soldiers. That's what it is. Do you all in history tells us that in 1935 when Italy one at uh, Ethiopia. They went in there and they damn near annihilated the whole people. They came in and killed the people like damn dogs. The UN, Britain, America, France, they just made a verbal assault, said it was wrong, but there was no, there were no criminal war crime. Nothing at all. Because they were all doing the same thing. They were pillaging the nation of Africa. They were robbing the people of their wealth. And then they say that they kill each other. The hell, they have killed more people. And that mindset has butchered and killed and robbed and stole from the masses of people more than any nation. Hell, those little tribes, they, they got spears and they got bow and arrows. And these are things that uh, 
that are weightier that we should understand, that we understand the conscience of a corrupt mind, uh, that we allow the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach to be our strength, Yisrael. We cannot capitulate, we cannot, uh, we cannot spare the emotions uh, of that damn twisted mind. We must assault it. I don't give a damn who it is. We must be the sons of Yisrael. Damn the whiteness is corrupt. You don't even know where the word came from. White people don't even know where the word came from. Damn the word blackness. It has no identity. None whatsoever. Hallelujah. You're either Yisra'ya, or you're on the black side, or you're on the white side. I am on your side. As far as me and my house, we're going to serve Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I don't give a damn. I will make assault on it all. You hear me? You understand? Hallelujah. This is what must be. We must, we must eradicate this mentality and the spirit among the nations of people today. When I saw that how the babies and the children are dying, I said, Yah, what do you do? If I sent $10,000, if we had it to send, it would not even be. Because even the nation is more corrupt now than it was before. Mr. Kaiser said the other day, I read it, if America attacked Pakistan, we will fight with the Pakistanians. That's what he said. Man, a nation that men have died for the rich and the powerful in this nation. To try to rob, you think that America did not know that there was somewhat in the excess of $10 trillion worth of wealth there in that country in the ores? You think that they did not know that? Who are establishing branches and, uh, uh, and connection or powerful men, what they call in government, uh, but the powerful, uh, uh, the powerful bankers of, of America and the world? Come on, Yisra, yeah, we, can't, we can't take no wicked side. We have to take the right side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Damn the white side. I take your side. Hallelujah. And so we as the House of Yah, we should be garnished with precious of Yah stones uh, and stones that are so beautiful. We should have the beautiful stone of wisdom. We should have the stone of his da'at. That's what we should garnish our minds with, not with pride and arrogance and haughtiness. And we are all guilty of that. We must get out of that damn wickedness. It's vile, it's repugnant, it is not of you are dealing with the precious things, the Zaha, E Job, Job 28 16. Listen, E Job 28 16. Now, this is E Job speaking as, uh, as E Job, or he speaks of the wisdom of Yah and the value of the wisdom of Yah as he also, as he rebuttal those or his friends as they were laying wisdom on his backside and he rebuttals by saying here as the ruach of Yah move Eob 2016 he said the wisdom of Yah it cannot be valued with the goal of upra not upra but upra the goal of upra with the precious onyx or the sapphire he said that's how the wisdom of Yah is should we not Yisra'ya be contending for the weightier things. That is the knowledge of Torah that it is practical in our lives because we have a spiritual identity with the kingdom. That's how precious wisdom is. It begins with the deen. We must begin with the deen of Yah, the judgment of Yah, that we may, we may have the sense of condemnation to sweep our own lives out and let his judgment flow like hell upon us. There are lying, wicked ways that are full of lies. Of all uncleanliness. That we will be cleansed, Yisra'ah. Judgment began first at your house. You judge your motive. One thing that I must say and give credence unto the man. He taught me one thing. Son, make sure your motive is pure. Your desire is sincere. You may fall. You may succumb. But don't pursue that which is not the, of the pure nature of Yah. I've never forgotten that. 
If that had not been imparted into me, uh, I would have seen things and watched others how they were going. Uh, their fine homes we call fine. Uh, their cars and their suit of clothing uh, and desired that, but I've never desired that. Never wanted that. That's never been a major objective of mine. If that was the case, I would not have my issue on making me these $2 suits, $10, 30 40 50 You can't find the dollar material in Walmart anymore, right? $3.99 a yard, $35, $40 with everything. I would have me a tailor in Charlotte and make me suits, tailor-made. But the finest of the Italian wool, $100 a yard, $200. And that's the truth. Have my shoes made, not buying anything off the rock. Let the contour of my foot, my feet. Every pair will fit like a leather pair of gloves. I've never desired that. I've never desired the Mercedes Benz and the Jags and cars and vehicles. I never desired that. Never wanted that. Never desired the diamond rings uh, and the $10,000, $200,000 watches, $100,000. Never desired that. Never. Never wanted that. We must deal with the weightier things of Yah. Wisdom is, of, is so precious. It is zakhar. It is of great value. Is not wisdom valuable? It's not of great substance. These are the weightier things. Let me go back to Matitiya. He says, just hold, just listen. He says, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay your tithes of your mint, your anis, and your cumin, but you omit the weightier matters of the Torah. We must understand what is weightier or zakhar in the Torah. We must understand that what is the weight? What, the, what is he employing when he used the word zakhar? Is it precious? Or is it something that bear weight upon your shoulder? Is it something that oppress you and wear you down? No, that's not the zakah of Yah. It is of great substance and great value. It is of great riches, Yisrael. Here it is, summed up here in Tehillim, Psalms. Hallelujah. This is of great value. And the world has caused us to fear this. Tehillim 116.1. 15, Tehillim 116, 15, precious Zakah in the sight of Yah is the death of his Kiroshim. Precious in the sight of Yah is of great value. Not just our expiring in this realm, but the death of sin and the death of the muth, the destroying, the impelling of every action and deed that resists the power of Torah. That's precious in Yah's sight. That we would destroy the element of this bazaar, the flesh, this buzzardly nature. We eat every unclean thing. Does the buzzard eat every unclean thing? We eat every unclean thing. And the weightier matters of the Torah directs us to the things that are clean and pure in the sight of Yah. But our bazaar, the flesh, it loves every unclean activity, every unclean thing. It preference that over the clean things of Almighty Yah. So precious, it is zakha, it is of great value, it is of wealth, it is a rarity when one impel the power of their flesh in the sight of Yah. When there's no will, no desire to sin, uh, no desire to be full of pride or arrogant uh, or haughty, uh, or show a disposition uh, that is not of the mentality uh, of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's what we need. This is a cruel generation. Sam Cook sing the songs, This is a mean old world. To live in all by yourself. It's mean. It's mean. This world is mean. I found out that there is something fundamentally wrong with this earth and the people. They will lie without conscience. They will tell lies without conscience of their lies. You are sick. When you can lie, it doesn't affect you. It doesn't bring you to your knees. It doesn't show you you've lied maliciously intending purpose to lie, something is sick in you. You are of your father, the devil. 
He was a liar from the beginning because he did not abide in the Torah of Yahweh. When you can lie like that, when I can just lie even against my enemies, even my enemies, I can't do that. To tell a lie on them and to lie perpetually yeah, without even thought of my lies, something is twisted here. And this, there's nothing here as a labab or a heart. We have no heart. And I find this generation, it is one that, ah, how amazing it is. And they think they're going into the kingdom. No liar is going into the gates of Yaz Melchut. No liar. No liar. No liar. Period. But this is a generation that's full of lies. And they lie without conscience because their minds have been seared with the Harayan. When you can lie and you're not troubled by that, you are sick. When you can lie, it doesn't even bother your conscience. You are a sick, bastardly dog. I don't care who you are. When you can make things up on even your enemies, I will not make a lie on my enemies. Hell, I don't want to even talk about them. I don't have time. I'd rather talk about Yah. But to make and to put a blatant lie, to stand here and blatantly lie against them, I leave them alone. Or to put something on what they call the internet. And you know it's a lie. Something is twisted in your psyche, your conscience. You can say what you want to. Hallelujah. No liar is going to enter into the gates of Yah. Moving quickly here for us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I want to show you. I know I made this statement when I said this here. When Yoshua said that you have omitted the weightier matters of the Torah in Matithiah 23.3. He used the word judgment. And I know we use the word mishpat to judge or mishpatim, the judgment of Yah. He used the word judgment. That is one of the first or it takes precedent over any other matter because everything's began with the judgment seat of Omar Yah. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Yah. And those that will receive the rewards unto eternal life and those for condemnation. Here's an expression that Daiweed speaks here concerning what is so valuable and so precious in Tehillim 100, uh, Tehillim, uh, hallelujah. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, in Proverbs, Mishli, Proverbs, uh, he speaks with the great wisdom that he had and possessed. Proverbs 28, this is the power of uh, his true deen. Proverbs 20, verse 8. It says a king. Doesn't it say that? Or the Melech? Proverbs 20, verse 8. Does it identify the individual? It says a Melech, a king, that sits on the chasse of the throne, that it is crown of authority and power, sits on the chasse of judgment. It says that, doesn't it? He's talking about the seed of his deen. That he expense justice, uh, judgment, uh, and condemnation. How do I know that? Because he tells us. He say, he scatters away all evil uh, with his eye in. He makes evil flee with his spiritual and his mental ability to judge, uh, to correct matters, and to condemn. It is not just the mishpat. The translations will utilize that. I was reading the other day this man that was a Muslim all of his life. And then Yah began to deal with a man's heart. And he breaks down the difference between the Aramaic and the Hebraic. He said they are basically almost the same, but they are words and footings of words and sound that it doesn't carry the same connotation. And he defines how that his name is Yahweh, his name is Yahshua, and he's a very intelligent man. He speaks Arabic, he speaks Hebrew, 
He speaks English. He's a student. He's an elder. All the ach. And so you're going to take what he says for not? Hell no, I would not. You can and be arrogant. And so it gives us a light of understanding that even though the Aramaic or the Arabic rendition of a word, it doesn't mean that it carries the fullness of connotation of its definitive as the Hebraic and its words meaning. And that's the truth. He speaks here. That can be read in the English vernacular. Can I read it again? A king sits on the throne of judgment. He sits there to judge. That's what a king does. That's what a king does. He sits on the throne of judgment, scatters away all evil Allah, with his eyes. When he opened his eyes, that he shows the mental and the spiritual expertism in that matter, just his eyes scatters away the evil. If we had Yahshua sitting on the kesse of our heart, the throne, even when one lies that there's a matter that is so trivial, even our eyes shall scatter or to expose their evil. But it doesn't do that. Because we have omitted the weightier matters. We have omitted judgment. Judgment, that we have omitted the weightier matters of the Torah. And the first matter of the Torah is judgment. It is judgment. It is judgment, Yisra'ya. Let no one deceive you. It is judgment. Not what this whore has taught you. Uh, to have riches and cars and Cadillacs. Uh, that's not so. To have your big, fine, uh, palatial palette uh, on the mountaintop. That's not so. The most weighty thing of the Torah, the matter, and the scribes and the Pharisees, because they are hypocrites, they omit that. And a hypocrite will omit that. I'm trying to show us the value of the substance of those things that y'all call weighty. The zakah, the things that are rare. You don't find that today. We don't find that among Israel that we that sit in the place or in the seat of judgment. We sit with the Torah in our land. When one comes to us, we judge out of the bosom of Torah. And just with our eyes, we will say, you're a liar. Go get the man, get the daughter. Let's find out. That's the Sadiq way to do it. That's right. You don't let anyone be carrier of gossip. I look at him and say, I've been here long as anyone, and I've never allowed that. Go get him. You have all opposition? Go get him. Let's, let's. Now what did you say? I've never found it that the matter doesn't change when you confront it that way. Hallelujah. I'm going to press on and finish this today. I'm going to finish it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the weightier thing. Judgment, Yisra'ya. I want to deal with that a little bit. Again, he says in Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, strive Pharisees. You pay your tithes of all your substance. And have omitted. You've disposed of. You've denied. You've rejected. The weightier. That's what it says. Matters of the Torah. The weightier. The zakah. The precious. That which is most valuable. And he identifies in the process of that, that which begins with the primary thing uh, is judgment. You can't love anyone unless you learn how to understand the judgment of God, unless you judge yourself. You can't be kind to anyone unless you judge yourself. You can't bring forth substance of anything that is, uh, that is to that individual's advantage unless you judge yourself and, and see your flaws and your shortcomings. You can't do that. What are the way to matters of Torah? But well, there's more than that. Uh, what Yahshua said, he gave, us, he gave us the premises we're about to work from. You've omitted. When you omit something, you see it, but you don't want to see it. I see it, but I'm not going to see it. I don't want to see it. But it says, I don't care, I don't want to see it. As I had a man here 
One year was 60 plus years old, 64. I'm trying to show him something in Torah. I say, no, let us, I say, let us read each word carefully, man. He jumps up, I don't want to see it. For that he was ignorantly, he was willingly ignorant. He was a blind fool leading blind individuals. He jumped up and said, I don't want to see it. And that's the way we are. So when someone comes to me, I will take them, no, let's, hold up. You must look at each word, my friend. And deal with it in the context of speech. That's why we have grammar. There are these historians that write things on the scripture. I wouldn't even, I don't even read it. I may have access to, but I don't read it. Because I don't allow them to pollute my mind. This ark that I've come in touch with, I haven't, I'm going to write him. He's a wise man. I like the way he talks and writes. Hallelujah. Not many today. Hallelujah. 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 Moving on. I want to deal with this for a moment here. Judgment. Here in the book of Eob. Job. This is a dissertation. A dissertation from Eob. Unto, uh, unto Bildad. The Shuhi. The Shuhite. Job 19 verse 29. As Job was, Eob was wrestling with all of his complications uh, of all the great afflictions and trials that he was enduring, uh, he brought forth this in a very dynamic way. He says, uh, be afraid of the sword or the herep, the power to destroy, for wrath or the chema, the burning anger or rage, it brings uh, punishment, punishment. For the burning rage of Yah, it brings uh, his own. The word punishment of on in this text, it is implying that you are guilty of your wickedness. And so that's what the wrath of Yah brings. That's why we must consider the weightier things of the Torah. He says again, be afraid of the sword. Why would I be afraid of the sword? If I've done right, I don't have to be afraid of the sword. You go down the highway, you know you're doing 55, the cop pad, you know you're doing right. You walk it down the street and they, they confront you like, what's, what's wrong, man? What have I done? I haven't done anything. But he prefaces this and he warns us, be afraid of the sword. Why would we be afraid of the sword? Why should we be afraid of the Torah of Yah? Is not the word his sword? Is that not one of the offensive and defensive weapons of Yah? The sword of the Ru'ak, which is the Torah, the word of Yah. He tells us to be afraid of the sword for Hama, or the wrath, the burning indignation, the fire of Yah's terror, brings now the punishment. See, he tells us it brings the ovan, or the guilt of one's sin. We know that it is a guilt of a matter because he used the word punishment. Bring the punishment of the sword. It is Yah's wrath. That brings the punishment of the sword. That you, that we as Yisrael, may know that there is a deen. So, when his wrath comes, is it not an indignation? Is it not to destroy? Is it not to read that in your own sense of knowledge? That's what he is saying. Don't be afraid of the sword. Because you know when the sword comes, it is the reward to you of your own. Your wickedness. If you're afraid, you know you're guilty, you're condemned. You know he's going he's gonna to take your, your nephews down to the gates of hell. So he tells you if you're right, come on, if, if I've sinned, I've done all this to you all, uh, that the, the wisdom of y'all speak to you and me about. Uh, turn that one on, man, this is hot in here. He said, then why should I be afraid? Why are you afraid? I want to read it again. We need understanding. Wisdom is principle, but in all I get it, we need to understand. I want to read it again. You can inject meaning to this any way you want to, but it is clarified in the speech and the utterance of Eob. Be afraid of the sword, for wrath brings punishment of the sword. That's why you better be afraid. Why? That you may know that there is deem, there's judgment, there's condemnation. That's what he was saying. You better be afraid of the sword. Because once you see the sword, you see the wrath of Yah, it's going to bring the deen of Yah, the judgment. That's why we must begin to weigh out the weightier matters. 
These little trivial things that besiege in us, it should not be. The jot and the tittle, it should not be Yisra'ya. That's all right. You learn how to cross the T. You teach your child how to write. The child will learn how to cross the T in due time. You understand? You don't get frustrated with the child. Huh? You don't speak the child. You don't, you, you, don't, you don't put them through a trial of rigor when you couldn't even do that at your age or at your time. It's damn stupidity. He said the daughters of Tizayan, they are cruel. And you will be cruel on them because... Talk to me, I will. You'll just be cruel because you can be cruel. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's flat out wrong, Yisraya. It's wrong. It's not right. So we must be afraid of the sword. What the word of Yah today, that is his sword. He's sending his sword today. Where did he begin in his house? He sends his sword among us. The enemy has tricked our minds to read in a way or to, to uh, deduct things in a way that is detrimental to us. The judgment is precious. These are some of the weightier things, Israel, yeah, because it keeps us out of the gates of hell, out of destruction. We need to understand the deen, deen of Yah, his judgment, his condemnation, his wrath that is poured out without conscience. We need to understand that. And then we have what we call the hell of Yah, his judgment, to keep us in line with Yah. Because if we are not judged, then we will not correct our ways. So we ought to welcome judgment. That's what the Torah, that's what we should meditate in the Torah day and night because it judges us and show us how we fell in our appropriate affection for our halt and our, and our ach. Shows where we are, we are going wrong. We always look to someone else to do right. Then what about me? Where am I? What am I doing right about the matter? You don't want to talk to me, but then come on. It's, I'm not the problem. It's you the problem. You got a problem with her. You're the problem. You got a problem with him. You're the problem. It's not him. You need to get your heart right. And you carry this bohemian, uh, uh, this camel, uh, this, uh, this albatross in your spirit. Uh, you can't judge nothing right. You're going to judge me wrong. These individuals full of their sin and their drunkenness, drugs and all that, judging me, go to hell. Go to hell, you faggot fool. Man wrote me a letter the other day, said that uh, you must like playing with little boys. You must have been a faggot. Well, that damn dog was a faggot. When he gets sick, he calls me. I don't even talk to him. I won't even talk to him anymore because he doesn't like me to use the word faggot because he's been a damn faggot. I don't play with little boys because he's played with little boys. So he accused me of that. See, that's why he accused me of that because he's played with little boys. I never accused him. Never even called his name, have I? And I tell this dirty faggot dog, don't even listen to me. You're a stupid jackass. You sit there on the Shabbat. You know why he listens to me? Because there ain't a damn thing out there. There ain't a damn thing out there. You got this homogenized, saturated uh, satisfaction of the flesh. Damn our bazaar, our flesh. It's just like a buzzard. It eats every unclean thing. And this damn fool will sit there and listen. He'll probably write again. So I wrote him back and said this. You answer fool according to their damn folly. I said, I don't bother you. I don't mess with you. I don't even call your name. Why are you doing this to me? Leave me alone. Please don't listen to me. There are others out there. Find someone that is more appetite to your taste and leave me alone. But because of the demons in this damn faggot dog, he's going to respond again. He's going to respond again. These little effeminate men, they're not men. Hallelujah. I play with the wife. That's who I play with. Hallelujah. I play with a wife, a woman. How about that? She likes to play with me. That's what the dirty bastard wrote. I wanted to read it, but that's, those are the words that he used. Because he can't stand for me. Damn every faggot. Yah has given the faggot up to that damnable faggotism. 
that you're so damn twisted you don't know you're a man or a woman. You are not even a dog. You're not even a beast. You're not even subhuman. You're filled with every kind of demon power, every kind of unclean thing. No, I'm not going to call them gays because they're not happy people. They're damn dogs. Hell, they've taken a beautiful word and just masterize it. I would say to my wife at times, I put on some gay colors. And I got to catch myself because they have distorted the damn definitive of the word. They're damn faggot dogs. They're dirty damn dogs. They're, they're, they're not even freaks of nature. They're not even a part of the progressive order of nature. Why? Because you don't see one damn cow that's humping another bull. And these little faggot effeminate men, they have no courage, no uh, cowards. Uh, so they can hide behind a keyboard and the internet. Here I am. You can see my face. Send me a picture of your face. You know where I live. Send me your address. I'll come there, preacher. You don't want to come here. Believe me, you don't want to come here. That you don't want to do. You just sit down. You don't want to come here. You don't want to do that, all right? No, I'm not taking that back. You don't want to do that. You sit down, man. All of you. They don't want to do that, all right? Moving on. Can I move on? I want to close here before two, all right? Hallelujah. I want to try to finish all this, but I got so many scriptures. I may not finish it. That's all right. Hallelujah. 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 Again to Yeshaya. I want to read this quickly here, all right? And I'm going to move to a position to close here in the next 20 minutes or whatever. Stay with me. You're on the live stream, all right? It will help you. I want you to understand this, 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 this situation here. That Yah had used the Syrians as he has used this nation and other nations uh, to impoverish, to, to be the tool and the instrument against his people. So this Nobi Yesha, he speaks uh, from the position and the condition of what the people of Yah have been doing uh, and what had been brought forth by the hand of Yah to bring them back to his bosom. Listen now, Yeshaya chapter 10 verse 1. It says, woe unto them that uh, haka or decree, uh, or they govern. That is what haka is. Uh, Yeshaya, Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Those that make decrees or they govern by an unrighteous or a spirit of ovind, of perversity and wickedness and iniquity and corruption. When a man rules his house like that, that's wicked. When a man that says that he's a messenger of Yah and he put a brunt of a burden on the people, bring your tithes, or bring them all. Or you ain't been blessed, go straight, give. He's living like a damn king. And that little mother is suffering. That's unrighteous. What he should do when the tithes and offerings come in, there's the wherewithal. I'm going to teach on that soon too. I want to show you all something that's profound. I don't want to move in that area. That there will be the wherewithal that uh, we can take this little bath, uh, take her out of the ghettos, uh, take out of there where they're banging and robbing everybody, put it in a little shack, and she will appreciate the kindness of y'all. No, we're not going to put you in no big mountain of a house, and you're going to free you up to bring all yours so that we can do this for the next year. So that's what should be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We live in a common area. You buy all the houses. Don't buy one or two. Get the wicked out. These damn fools say they love. They don't give a damn about each other. They're not going to do that, Yisraya. Buy up everyone. Believe me, my, my plan was to buy everything here for the people of Yah. These damn pigs out here, I don't own a damn thing. I don't want it. I don't want it because what heritage I have is in the kingdom. I'm going to die. And I don't give a damn where my body lies when it dies. You, don't, you can just throw You don't have to put me in a box. How do I know? I don't give a damn. The skin worms will just eat me faster. The elements, that's all. But when that name is called on that most powerful day, uh, I shall get up. And to labor for something that is not worth a damn thing, uh, I won't labor for that. I'm laboring to enter into the gates of yours uh, eternal power. I may see his presence. 
That's what I want. I don't want houses and land. Well, my plan was to buy every house. Even that house you're in. Every house on the street for what? For Yisrael. For his people, the lake and all. That they will have a heritage for their children. While I'm gone, meet your strong leadership to keep things right. Not something that is platonic. Looking after their own. My family, we gonna do this. Damn your family. Your family is wicked. Someone with the heart of Yah that will see that Yah's people, the needs are met. Hallelujah. It's amazing that they're saying that I love to spend money on me, buy expensive things. I don't even know how people form their hearts to even say things like that and write that. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. You can't see. You all know you're free to see what comes in. I will show you the PayPal account. I will show you what comes in and how we spend it. All right. Hallelujah. Let me move on quickly. He said, Warn to them that are governed unrighteously with this wicked decree. And they write grievous, uh, um, uh, they write grievous, troubling, uh, laborious, or uh, they write grievous, which they uh, prescribe. They prescribe something for you, uh, but it's not for them. I prescribe you work and give all, but I hold it all back for me. Isn't that wicked to govern that way? To say you have a little pain, man, get up and shake it off. And yet the smallest matter, I cannot shake it off. That's the wrong government. You understand? It's wicked. For say you to labor and me not to labor is wrong. I'd rather drop in the field than on a hospital bed. And I will drop in the field. You understand? I'm not afraid of that. To do what? To turn aside. That's what we do. We not die. We turn aside. We pervert. Turn aside the dull, the weak, and those that have no knowledge of Yah. Those that have not the substance of strength. We turn them aside from what? Judgment. From deen. That's what we do. No, I'm not going to turn you aside from the deen of Yah. I'm not going to turn you aside. We turn aside the poor from judgment. And to take away the right. From the poor of my people. That the almana or the widows. Uh, those that are in the desolate houses. Uh, may be their prey. Uh, and that they may rob the fatherless. Now that is what this wicked mindset today does. Uh, it robs the widows. It take away. Uh, it, it's not concerned. And it robs the fatherless. Uh, and it removes the tail away from judgment. I'm poor but my friend. Even though you're poor there's a judgment. And those that sit in the high places, these are the weightier matters of the Torah. We must give inspiration to the hearts of those that understand. Even though that dilemma that they're in, all things work for the top of them that love Yah. And those who are called according to his purpose. Come on, there you are, they're listening. I know one family, there are 10, 12 of them. And they have very little substance. But that's all right. That's all right. And the world has done. The outcasts and the poor, they've done them wrong. The judgment for them is different. I show the scribes. What they say is that a rich man steal $100 million and he gets seven years in prison. A poor boy from the hood robs someone for $50. He gets 50 years to life. He gets 50 years to life. He gets 50 years to life. A man swindle uh, the rich out of... Uh, 30 million dollars, uh, he gets three years in prison and a two million dollar fine. A boy goes down the street, robbing because of his covetousness, his loss, rob a store, he gets two life sentences without parole. You see the injustice, how they do the dial, they put them in positions, they're poor, they create nothing, the rich, one percent of the world's population less than that are living off the backs of the masses of the people and we think we're smart. I got my own house. You don't have a damn thing, man. We brought nothing into this earth and y'all allowed the wicked to set up a system that there certainly you will take nothing out. When you die, I don't give a damn if your name is on the deed the property paid for. If they don't pay the tax, it goes back to the greed of a nation, of a people that uh, 
wants every damn thing. I don't give a damn what you say. And Yah says, I will make sure that the laws say that. You brought nothing, there's nothing. You're going to come back and lay your hands on and say, this is mine. That's a fact, Yisra'ya. And so they take the poor and they abuse them. That's why we must deal with the weighty of things. Because her sister is poor. She doesn't have the knowledge. And Ak doesn't have the knowledge that you have. Uh, then you intrigue them. Uh, and you cause a greater burden to be laid upon them. Uh, and you exact from them more than you do those uh, that you believe have a greater knowledge of the Torah. It's wrong. It's wicked. It's not of you. And that's what happened to Yisra'ya because of the idolatry. And that's what is happening among us. Why? Because we are omitting the weightier things of the Torah. Moving on. Moving on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what will you do in the day of your visitation? What are you going to do? Listen to what he talks about now. He talks about the day of your visitation. The day of your punishment. The day of your deen. The day of your judgment. He says... And in the desolation which shall come from far. What are you going to do? So you keep the poor from judgment, the dean of Yah. What is the poor man going to do in the day of his desolation if he doesn't understand the judgment of Yah? What's going to happen if we don't understand the weighty matters of Yah? To whom, to whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave the splendor, the beauty, the yacha, the splendor of your kabod, your riches. Who are you going to leave your house to? Who are you going to leave your splendor of your riches to? He's coming as, he is not a thief, but he's coming as a thief in the night. He's coming when we are drunk in the world and we're not considering, we're omitting the weightier things of the Torah. I just want to deal with that one aspect. I can't deal with it all in one teaching. And this is just a smidget of what concerning the judgment. And then when he comes, uh, he's going to find us as a foolish virgin. We're pure in our own sight. We think we're right in our own sight. We think we're doing right in our own sight. But we have not the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yah. We must get to the weightier things of the Torah. We must begin to ponder the weightier matters. And it begins with the deen, the judgment, the mishpatim of Yah. That he judge our heart. And it begins at his house. And if we are the house, if he dwells in us, great is he that dwells in us. Then you better be guided at your own house, my friend. You better sweep around your damn dirty front door. You cannot be moody and 40 up and down every damn day. You're double-minded. That's why you're unstable in all of your damn ways. You must be stable. You must walk in the way of the Torah. You must ponder and not omit the way to your things of the Torah. You must consider what Yah says. That's why we are cruel. We see the weak one needing titty milk. We won't even give them milk. We see those that are sinned and needing help. We don't give a damn. You will confront what about an issue that is not worth a damn thing. Come on, Yisrael. I heard you said, they said, he said, she. Well, who, who said it? Well, I'm just holding it back. I will come on. How about that? I will. The things that are weightier, that is zakha, of great value and precious, of great substance, finer than gold. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to close from here. Give me a moment. I want to close from two things. No, I want to. Let me close from here. And then I want to give us some kind of confirmation of security and comforting. What Yah has done, as even through the eyes of the Nobi, Hanach, as he, what he saw for us, and the beauty of the weightier matter. I'm not going to get to the, all of those matters. And all of them need to be covered. I simply give you a foundation that you go from there, Yisra'ya. And take time. If you want to understand what he means about love, kindness, listen to me. I'm going to do a little example of how to study one day here. You take your concordance and you look up the word love, kindness in every place. And read all those texts down or mark them.
that will give you somewhat of a validity or understanding of his love kindness. Now, it doesn't give you the depth of it because there are many things associated with his love kindness that you're not going to find. And there are many ways to enunciate. It depends uh, on what kind of love kindness or how it is operated among us. You understand? And that's how you do it. Every word of yours is pure. That's what he called the hag to study. Not this damn mess we do reading. You don't read this like a novel. You study. You lahach. Hallelujah. I want to read from the book of Shirach. Hear the word of Yah. He gives us this great strength. But let me inject this what Shulubo says from the book of Wisdom. Wisdom 2.11. He says here, let our strength be the Torah of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be worth nothing. Let our justice be the Torah or our justice be predicated upon the Torah, the weightier things. And he says, for that which is feeble is found to be worth nothing. In those little feeble scenarios and little things that are not of great value, don't waste your time with them. Don't expend your energy on those things, Yisrael. They're worthless. They have no value. We spend our time on bygones of yesterday and yesteryear. Infractions imposed against us we perceive. Not our infractions we oppose against others. And the reason we don't consider ours is because we don't consider the weightier matters of the Torah. We judge ourselves or others out of a corrupt cesspool of wickedness and uncleanliness. And yet we should judge ourselves beginning out of the Torah. And then we can assess those that are dull, are weak, and thin. And we will not perpetuate those things that are of no value at all. But the things that are of great value, the weightier things. Any matter arise between any of us, you, anyone in Yisraya, let us go to the weightier matters. Let us go to the Torah and see what the Torah says. Ahot, you go to the Torah, I will go. Ach, you go, let us see what it says. That's how you do it. Hallelujah. And you don't compromise it. Someone will come with a greater revelation of the matter. And you don't speak by your emotions and your little damn dirty feelings. Damn your dirty feelings. They're not worth a damn. You feel nice today and I feel moody the next day. I don't feel like talking. I feel like talking. Uh, who wants to be around that? I don't. Stupid. Flat out stupid. It says in the book of Shurach, 3 and 20. For great is the, the power of Yah. Is it not great? It's Gadol, it is Zakah, it is precious. He is, honored by, he is honored by the humble and lowly, those that are now submit themselves unto the weightier things of the Torah. They, they are intrigued by his presence. He is honored by them. He is not honored by the arrogant and the proud. He is honored by the humble and the lowly. Seek not what is too difficult for you. We are people that we're always, that's wrong. You cannot be the masters of everything. You are stupid jackass if you want to be that. I don't give a damn about aerodynamics. I don't give a damn about the intricates of a computer or the mechanics of certain things. I care about the kingdom work. I care about that. And this is a generation who wants to be the master of everything and have no knowledge about a damn thing. As my natural brother would tell me, he said, I'm the jack of all trades, but I'm the master of none. I can do it a little, but I don't know how to master it. And so the wisdom of Shirak says, uh, seek not what is too difficult for you, neither search and investigate what is beyond your power. You don't even have the ability to convey it. You don't have the ability to convey a matter or a scripture revelation. Don't try to seek it out, just hear it. And the revelation will be revealed unto you by the mouth of a servant of Almighty Yah. But what is commanded and assigned to you, what one instructs you and then shows you, he said, think thereupon with reverence. We don't do that. Well, preacher, I think you're wrong. There's a preacher. I want to show you there's a preacher, preacher, preacher. He said, what have been consigned to you? What have been given unto you? He said, think on that and, and, and do it with reverence. For it is not needful for you to see with your eyes the things that are hidden. It's not meant for you to see everything. It's not meant for everything to be revealed unto you. 
It's not meant for you to see everything that has been revealed. Well, I don't see it that way. Have you ever heard people say that? You've said it. We have said it. Hallelujah. He tells us, do not meddle in what is beyond your task. We are a generation. We don't think that there's nothing beyond our ability. You don't even meddle in certain spiritual things. It brings about a disregard for those that Yah has ordained for that mastery of that skill for act. And that's a fact. Do not meddle in tasks beyond your task. For matters too great for human understanding have been shown you. There are matters that I don't understand. I have done research on the soltis, the evolving of the sound of revolution. And what I have found in all of the scientific knowledge that even the most, what they call the most brilliant minds in all their calculation, they say it is, it is beyond their ability because it is so complex that they don't understand it. And so they give us uh, theories that they theorize upon certain applications of signs in the heavens. And Yah gives us a simple sign, the moon. He gives us the moon and the sun to govern for his mo'adim, his seasons, his time. And you got everybody trying to calculate it from Yeshaya, from Jubilee, and this is what it means. And they all got different dates and different times. And even some of the most brilliant mathematic, mathematicians say that we don't even understand this. They really don't. Because he has hidden that from the wise and the prudent and has revealed it unto the simple babes. Bear with me. Hallelujah. Look at this right here in Shirak 324. Who has the book of Shirak? Read that for me, one of you, Zakin. The first two words in 24. Say it again. Many. How many? many. What, Zakin Bidami, you always quote that uh, are there a few that go in at the wide? Uh, uh, are there a few, Zakin Bidami, that go in the wide, uh, uh, in, the, in the broad way? No. Many, so he used the same word, mi'ud. Read that again, Zakin, uh, Yaramia. For many. Okay, so you said many. So how many go in at the straight way? I want to see if I got. Witness here, two or three. Let every word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. How many of you say, man, don't tell me a lot, Zakim Bidamina. How many is it, few? Yeah. No, no, how many that go in uh, at the broad and the, uh, and the, how many? Yeah. No! Yeah. No, man. What does it say, Zakim Yaramaya? Many are what? Are no! They're deceived by what? They're what? They're what? They're what? They're what? Oh, oh what? Vain, Vain what? Offense. Vain judgment. We judge by the way, deceive our own vain judgment. That's what the word opinion is. It's to make assessment and to judge. We deceive our own damn foolishness. Zakim Bidami, you sure, my friend? Many go there in of you. You sure that's what it said, Zakim? You sure you just read, read that again? For many are deceived by their, own by their own vain opinion. For their hasty judgment has led many astray. That's why I don't talk about things I don't have the knowledge of. We get hasty, high minded. We lead people astray. Well, he said that damn what you say. You haven't spent the, the time to analyze the matter. The phraseology he used, what he said, how he said it. Are there many that go in the broads and wide gates, Zakim, Benjamin, Dabash? Are you sure, man? For the hasty judgment lead many astray. And he talks about the wrong judgment, the wrong opinion of an evil suspicion had caused their thoughts to slip. That's what caused us to slip, our own damn evil opinion. Our own judgment, our own assessment. And he caused our minds to slip from the way they matters, Yisraya. The things that are of great substance. He says, without eyes, you want light. Profess not, profess not 
The knowledge, therefore, that you have not. Don't talk to nobody when you don't have the da'at, the knowledge, the discernment, the spiritual wisdom of a matter. Don't confront a messenger of Yah when you just have a tidbit of a matter. You've looked at a few scriptures or a few things. Come on, take some time. Take some months to study the matter, to regress, to digress. That's how we are. I get that when people call. You can tell. Uh, well, I just come to this knowledge nine months ago, and the first thing I want to do is begin to teach you. I say, stop it. You're going to teach me from a little immature mind. What you know is, come on, you can't teach me from that. That's our problem. Just like she's trying to teach you, she tries to teach him or her. She comes home excited because she, she, she came in the house other day, Poppy, I made 86 on one test, and then I made, did she make 86 or 82? 86? Okay, forgive me, 89, she made 100 on the other. She stopped in there, went through my office, showed 90, and went on home. But she wanted me to know she made 89, and she made 100. I ace it every time. Blindfolded, I ace it. I make 100 every time. I will. So that's how we do. We speak from a consciousness and a mind that has not developed and the more weightier things of Yah. And so we think we're speaking from a platform of great knowledge and wisdom and understanding. We really are not Yisrael, like Yah. Come on. The things that we ought not to even touch, leave it alone. It's not going to cause one to sin. Just stop. It's not going to make you love Yah more because, uh, because if someone defines a meaning of a word, that's not going to make you love Yah more. If it brings the essence of the word, that's not going to make you love Yah. Either you're going to love his commandments or you're not, Yisraya. Come on, let's stop that. We as a nation of people, uh, we strain after not. We try to refine the little small things. Uh, when she, instead of her saying, went to the store, she said, went store. Iraq. No, he should have said that. And he said it that way. Come on, I say this to our own, all of our strength and our own maturity in the ways of Yah. We need that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So, okay, you all turn to Hanak for me. Hanak chapter 39. I'm going to close from there, but I want to read this in the book of Debarim. I want to read this because of the Mishpatim or the Dean of Yah upon his people. And this is the judgment we shall see. Debarim, Deuteronomy 32, 19. And when Yah saw it, he saw their sacrifices to devils and not to him. He abhorred, he naats, he despised them. He hated them. It did not say their acts. T-H-E-M, is it, does it mean them? He despised them. Why? Because of the provoking of his sons and his daughter. Any time... A man that says he loves Yah provoke the children of Yisrael to turn from the light or the weighty of things of the Torah. Yah hates that man. He not adds, he despised that man. He's a blasphemy before Almighty Yah. Why Yah? And Yah said, he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what the end shall be. He said, for they are a very tapuk, uh, they're very perverse, wicked, they are very fluent generation. Children in whom there is no imuna. Can I go back here one more time? It says in Matithiya, that Matithiya 23 and 3, listen, woe to you, strive Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of your anus, uh, kumen, and you omit the weighty things of the Torah. He talks about juries, judgment, mercies, and imuna. He said, these are the things you should have done. Not that you omit the little small things, but you should have done these things. I want to close with that one, the imuna of Yah, the faith, all right? And I want to read from the book here of, uh, of Hanak. As he sees this great vision of the time of the gathering of Yah's people, what shall be and how it shall present itself that we can rejoice with this witness of testimony in our bosom. It says in the book of Hanak 39.1, he said, it shall come to pass in those yam that the children of the Bohir, the elect, and the Kodash ones will descend from the high heavens and the sea will become one with the children of the people of Yisrael. Those we shall be one in Yoshua HaMashiach. He said, in those days, Enoch received the book of zeal. Not only did he receive the book of zeal, but also the book of what? Wrath. 
Does it say that? Who have a Hanach, the book of Enoch? No one, all right. It said also the book of Raft as well, the book of Zeal. And this book is the book of Zeal. You get excited. But it's also a book of Raft too, Yisraya. As well as the book of Hayes and the book of the whirlwinds of the judgments of Omaria. The sovereign master of the Ruachim says that mercy shall not be upon them. It's not going to be upon them in the day of Yah's deen, his judgment. He's not going to show mercy. Not at all, Yisraya. Not at all. There I saw others dwelling, dwelling places of the Kodash ones and their resting place too. So there my eyes saw their dwelling places with the Kodesh, Kodesh Melchim, and their resting places, and the Kodesh ones. And they intercede and petition and prayed on behalf of the children of the people, and righteousness flowed before them like water. And the husband of the mercy like dew upon the earth. And thus it is in their midst forever and ever. That is the zeal of the Sadiq of Yah. That his righteousness through the power of our prayer. It is the river. It is the flow of the mighty rushing uh, of the water of washing and cleansing. Uh, purging and refreshing his house. Yisra'ya. In those days. My eyes saw the elect. What? A sadiq. Sadiq. Righteousness. And of imuna, And righteousness shall prevail in his days, and the righteous and the elect ones shall be without number before him, Olam Viat, forever, forever, and ever. The only way we're going to walk in the power of his righteousness, we must consider the weightier things of the Torah that we are judged. It begins with judgment, Israel. We have to judge our own hearts. If we will judge our own hearts, we will have no need to be judged of no other man. And that's a fact. He said, and I saw the dwelling place underneath the wings of Yah. Did we not just read that in Tehillim? I saw the place of comfort, of refuge, of, of hosts. And all the Sadiq and the elect the Bahir before him shall be as intense as the light of fire. That's the beauty, that's the radiance of the people of Yah when we're before him. We come into his presence before him. We should be as intense and radiant as the fire that flows, as the fire of Yah's word in us. Their mouths shall be full of blessing. And their lips will praise the name of Yahweh of Sabah, of Host, and Sadiq before him. Will have no end. And the unrighteousness before, before him, and, and the uprightness before him will not cease. This is an upright thing to do, Yisraya. Listen, I close here. There underneath his wings, I want to dwell. That's where I want to be. Underneath the wings of Yah. That's where I want to dwell. And my nephesh desire that dwelling place. I want. I want that refuge. And though we would have found that it's through Torah, Yisrael. And my life desires that dwelling place. Already. Already. Not tomorrow. But already my portion is there. I know what's there for me. That's why we cannot omit the word of things. The Zakah Torah. He said, I know my portion is there. Why? Because the Torah tells me. It is written. I know my portion is there. Why? For it has been reserved for me before Almighty God. He is, he's reserved it. You didn't deserve it. I didn't, I didn't reserve it. Your mama did. He has reserved it. He has reserved that place. For no one can fit there but you. Because you are a prize. You are a zaka. You are a precious red diadem in his crown. There is no other one like us. No other. He has reserved the place for Yisrael. So let us as a nation of people. Let us go back to the way. The Torah way. Let us go back to the old way. And begin to, to establish in our minds the way the things of the Torah judgment. And when we've done all that, his hasid, his kindness, uh, we will all sum it up that we believe. by uh, May I rock you all, you that have joined us. I'm going to stop here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May he rock you all. Yisraya, may his strength fill your bosom. May he cause your heart to delight mightily in the knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach. 
for our promises are in the Torah. Hallelujah. 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 All right, beautiful. I said to my young friend this morning, they called to join us. I hope he joined us on the live broadcast today. May the riches of you fill your heart. And rest upon you all, Yesuraya. Hallelujah. This is harder than a day's leave out there. In the, I'm going on the other side tomorrow to split wood. We got a job down here for Ak Azakhen Shimri. I said I would take the beast there. I call him the beast now. Yawasadaka. And I will call, take my Tasmanian bull here. I call him the bull. He's the bull now. A bull will knock you down, all right? I'll just leave it at that. I'll take my Tasmanian bull. And I'll take my plow driver. Yeah, Zachim with me. And we're going to split some wood. This right here is harder than splitting wood. It is, whether you buy that or not. This takes a lot. I can recuperate from splitting wood. Hallelujah. May Yah strengthen you all, Yisrael. We are his elect. Don't let anyone beguile you with that. You stand fast in the Torah of Yah. And let us always consider the weightier matters. When anything arises among us, let us consider the weightier matter. And let us go to the judgment seat of Almighty Yah. And if he condemn us, you rejoice by Emunah and thank him. Because there are matters that were hidden from you you don't understand. He has not revealed all things to me or to you. But he's revealed all things in Yeshua unto Yisra'ya. You understand? You will never know it unless you have the visibility of the lightest, tremendous light dwelling in our bosom. He has not hidden anything for us. He has given us all things, all things, cold things that pertain unto Sadiq and Chayil or the Chayil, the life of Yah. He's given us all things. He has not kept anything back unto the promised seed. And we have all that we need. All that we need is in Yeshua. And we have everything that we need, Yisraya. So let us rejoice. Let us always, let us always deal with the weightier matters and not omit the little small things. Well, she hurt your feeling. Well, let's deal with the weightier matter first judgment. And then you may have judged her wrong or he, you judge him wrong. And we judge him correctly and just say, well, you know, it's a small matter. You, you did offend me, but that's all right. I, you know, I, I need to grow up. That's how you do that, Yisraya. You don't omit those things. Well, you should have had your, you should have had your, 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 your hand up on the Father. You had it right here and sat it right there. That's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees had done according to the ordinance of Yah. No, it should have been three steps instead of two and a half. Those were not full steps. That's what we are, we're debating and bickering uh, like some damn uh, fruitcakes. Uh. Instead of the weightier matters, let's begin a judgment. Judgment square everything all right. Judgment set it all and it set all things in motion. Judgment sets it all. And once you start there, you will remedy everything. And that's why we don't remedy, because we don't start with judgment. Hallelujah. I'm Moa today. Yah barak you all. Toda you for all things. My friends, we barak you all. My enemies, Toda, stay with us and keep listening. All right. We will feed you with sweet bread. Hallelujah. That's right. You can scrutinize me. I don't mind. You can scrutinize what I teach, what I preach. I have no compunction with that, sir. Hallelujah. Just make sure you got your armor on right if you want to challenge me, all right? Hallelujah. And I love to be challenged. I don't care what it is. Hallelujah. I challenge, listen, I close with this. I challenge myself in everything. Every, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's something physical. I don't care if it's something that's work. I don't care what it is. I challenge myself. There are things that I don't do because I'm lazy. I don't have to do it. There are things I get my oxymi on to do. Oh, come on. Y'all being I put everything on him. I can do it all. I don't want to do it all. Hallelujah. Get Zakim with me. Come on, with me. Take it. Zakim out of me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, Shembri. Let's roll. You handle that for me. I don't want to do it all. Because I'm not a micromanager. I know that we're all, ah, we're men with the ish. Yeshua sure ahead. And there's nothing I can do that you can do. And if you can't do it, or I can do it, you show me, then I'll get a conscience of that. You don't hide something and think you're the only one. I, I don't ever want to be like that, thinking that I'm the only one who can do something. That's stupid. What I know, I want you to know. What I learn, I want to, you know, I may not can express it in the best format or say it the right way because I don't have the eloquent ability like some of the other actors speak in a lower tone of voice, but that's all right. I get it across. Come on, I want you to know. I don't want to hide and I don't want to keep nothing back. 
I don't reserve, that's, you know, the people with recipes, oh, it's a family recipe for 60 years. That's so stupid. Get the, I was talking to a man one day, I must say this, and we were talking about barbecue, and he said, man, I, he said, oh, I'm a professional barbecue. I said, yeah, I said, okay. I said, I, I like the barbecue. So I started telling him how I was going to do some ribs and all of that, and he said, oh, man, that's, he said, no, I don't use, uh, I don't use charcoal like I used to. He said, I use gas grills now. He said, I put it on there for 10, 12 hours. I said, okay. I said, I like charcoal. I just like the way it does it. I said, I like that. He said, uh, so he's, he's, he was telling me, he said, but I got a killer recipe. I said, well, tell me the recipe, man. He looks at me and said, man. I said, come on, man. Come on, man. You, you think you're the only one who knows that recipe. Come on, tell me the recipe. You, somebody else may have it a little different way. Come on, man. He said, well, since I don't know you, I give it to you. But I ain't giving this to nobody else. That's stupid. It is so damn stupid. You think that his family is the one that originated that recipe? You're stupid. We are stupid people. Stupid. I said, give me the recipe. Well, you know what? I didn't even use the recipe. He forgot it as I walked away from him. Okay. And that doesn't sound, mine sounds better than that. You telling me you use that? Like, yeah. Okay. Looking at him, well, maybe your taste buds are a little different than mine. But that doesn't sound appealing to me. Nah, I stay with mine. Hallelujah. And so that's the way we are. We've been taught that way. And it's wrong, Israel. It's wrong. We love someone we share, don't we? Huh? That's right. She can have a, she can be nibbling on a little piece of sweet bread and a little baby. Maybe she grabbed it for you. She'll let her put, she put it in her mouth. Although she can't eat it, she'll let her nibble on that. That's the way we should be with each other. Yeah, Barak, let us stand to our feet. We'll sing next week, Yosef. I'm out. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim and all things are about. We do Barak you for all things for this blessed day of assurance you have granted unto us. We lift our hands and we look up unto Hashem, I am where I have come from. And we look for the coming of Yoshua HaMashiach. Go with your people, Barak them all. Keep us all on this Yom Shabbat. A beautiful day. We shall rest. And Yoshua, we delight in the coolness of the weather. All you have granted unto us. Go with your people. Take them safely home. Those that join us on the live broadcast, we pray, pray your blessings of wisdom, understanding, and the knowledge of your Torah. And the weightier matters rest upon them. In Yahshua's name and with our voices we cry hallelujah. 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 Amen. Ya Barak Shalom.